Nine, eight, seven, we have a go for main engine start. Four, three, two, one, and lift off. It's the SFL Nights with, it's the SFL Nights with, with AJ Stryker, with AJ Stryker. It's the SFL Nights with, it's the SFL Nights with, with AJ Stryker, with AJ Stryker. Uh, Ashley Jackson about the action. SFL news, come and join with interaction. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah, you will leave with satisfaction. Yeah, tell your team and tell your captain. Come and tune in new episodes weekly. You can tune in from your room in afternoons and when the moon hits, it's unique. It's the SFL nights with. It's the SFL nights with. With AJ Stryker, with AJ Stryker, it's the SFL Nights with, it's the SFL Nights with, with AJ Stryker, with AJ Stryker, uh. It's the SFL Nights with. It's the SFL Nights What is up, with. SFL Nation? Welcome back to SFL Nights with AJ Stryker. Thank you so much for joining me today or tonight or whenever you decided to hit that play button or turn on that radio dial. I really appreciate it, y'all. And of course, I got my good friend here with me, Diggy, with that uh, Devin Hester jersey on, that throwback. How you doing? There's a purpose to it. There's a purpose to it. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm still upset. I'm broke. Goat. Goat should have been in. Should have been in. Uh, no reason. No reason he's not in the Hall of Fame right now. Amen. So, I can I second I'm, that. I'm sharing. I, sec- <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. He, he, he should be in there. Change the game. Change the game. So. Indeed. That and, oh, did you see uh, Michael Jordan's birthday present? Who? Michael Jordan's birthday is on Friday. No, what's the his real birthday? goat? What's his birthday present? The goat of goat, Michael Jordan. You know? uh-huh. Uh huh. He's did a ten million dollar donation to uh, Make a Wish. Really? Very admirable. I mean, yeah, he is a the, billionaire. The highest donation. One, yeah, the highest donation from one person they've ever they've ever had. So. Wow, and, and you know they should be able to make a lot of wishes come true. Oh yeah, well I, I like that and the fact that like Shaquille O'Neal, Shaquille O'Neal does a lot of stuff and he just doesn't tell anybody. That's not the that's not the point of it. But you know, people leak stuff out all the time. So that's true. That's true. that's what I like. Indeed, and we might have to have a show just on that kind of stuff, man. I swear. Um, but thank you guys for tuning in with us. We're gonna kind of our part is gonna be a little quick this evening because I do have a lot of guests. But first. We're going to go over week five action. Um, we're going to do our was I right and or we'll rewrite, I should say, and then picks for week six. We have our hot topic question coming from Sean Big Dog Moore from Arizona. And he wanted to know if we can add a schedules um, channel inside of our discord be- uh, for just the post schedules only. No other information, just schedules. So we'll talk about that. And I have my guests for my fourth and goal interviews, with, which will include Tom Welsh, Jacob Bovet, uh, Dion Hawkins, Axel Raven, and Yogi Bar. So, yeah, this is a big show today. So, here is how week five broke down. So, Houston Headhunters took on the fourth. Worth Toros, where Fort Worth won 38 to 16. I was wrong about this game. Tulsa Desperados took on the Sioux Falls Sparrows. At Liberty Park and So Falls won 31 to 20. I was also wrong about this one as well. Portland Fleet took on the Vancouver Legion. 
where Vancouver won. I'm sorry, but uh, Portland won 27 24. I was wrong about this game as well. Woo! On a roll with the nose. Motor City V8 took on the Las Vegas Fury. And Las Vegas won 52 to 26. I was right about this game. Carolina Skyhawks battled the DC Dragons, where Carolina won 17 to 13. And I was actually right about this game. Charleston Predators battled the Baltimore Vultures, where Baltimore won 33 to 21. I was right about that one. London Knights took on the Arizona Scorpions, where Arizona won 52 to 31. I was right about this game. Denver Night Wings battled the Queen City. Corsairs, where Denver Nightwings won 49-46. I was right about that one. Louisiana Revolution battled the Florida Storm, where Florida won 34-21. I was right about that one as well. Alamo City Artillery took on the Mexico City Aztecs, where Mexico City won 26-23. It was right about that one. And last game, ending things off, was the Indianapolis Ramblers Taking on the Minnesota Legends, where Minnesota won 34-26, and I was wrong about this game. So this week, got seven right and four wrong. One. All right, Diggy, so it looks like I got uh, seven right and four wrong this week. Uh, how did you do? Man, you know what? No matter how many games I pick different from you, we, we just tied again. <laughs> we just tied again. We both got seven and four this week, so... I'm I'm 26 out of 48 right now, and you're 29 out of 48. But that's okay. I still got plenty of time to smoke you. Oh, okay. Well, you think so? You think so? But we'll see. No, I know so. <laughs> okay. See how many? Hey, hopefully you got your pick done. I tell you what, since you know so, if you wind up winning, then how about you do? I don't know. Let's say 60 push-ups. Um, I mean, no, if you wind up losing, you do 60 push-ups because you lost. How about that? 60 push-ups. You, you got me doing 40 already. It ain't nothing. <laughs> I, okay, cool. Well, then that's what it's going to be then. I might as well do the 120 then since it ain't nothing. <laughs> but y'all, so this is, we, we decided to choose a couple games this week to break down. And Diggy, who did you choose first? Oh, hey, hang on. You stop right here. Stop. I got to confront you on something. I have to okay. confront you on something. I, I saw the video you posted. Everybody knows you know you me and eddie we do the the push-up thing for you know the interceptions mm -hmm. and a, a team building thing and uh i counted you did nine no i did you ten. Did nine i did ten i no, even held no, the tenth one no 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 when 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 you go down coming back up is one when you go down coming back up is two you don't want me to come out to Arizona and, and drill sergeant you, you know, you know, I'll, I'll just keep counting. One, 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 one. That ain't the start. Okay. First off, I was in the marching <laughs> band, so I, I, I am very familiar with push-ups. Hey, I, I got witness. I got witness. Everybody that saw it and Eddie. Eddie Eddie said, I think she shorted us. That was nine. No. I said, I you didn't. know what? I did extra just for you. I did extra just for you because I knew you messed up. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? It's okay. <laughs> yeah <laughs> well y'all better be lucky you got those out of me because i did have that stomach virus so you better be lucky i did them. but yeah after, after uh an awesome michael jordan flu game is what you pulled on that <laughs> week yeah and well, we'll you'll talk, talk about that in a bit yeah exactly <laughs> but who did you pick uh i I'm gonna like you said we got a lot of stuff going on this show so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm only gonna do two games out of the three that we did. Mm -hmm. uh first one was motor city in las vegas uh i'm just gonna speak kind of quick las vegas hosted uh the detroit uh, the detroit lions i mean uh motor city v8 <laughs> you know i like the uniforms they, they look they look clean i like them. but uh vegas got on the board with a great field goal by rage to go over three uh las vegas really sh uh never slowed down as they got Kirby into the end zone to make it, uh, you know, zero to 10 motor city struggled to get going as Max Jackson picked them off and Las Vegas was able to capitalize by getting Prince wonder his first career touchdown to go up 17. Uh, that was only the first quarter. We had a lot of that this week. Some, some crazy numbers just in the first quarter or even the first half. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and motor city finally got things moving at the end of the first, you know, uh, they were able to go into the second, you know, converting on third downs and, and moving the ball, uh, hitting Shane Kaufman 
in the very back corner of the end zone to get the gap closed a little bit, 7-17. to But the joy was very short-lived as uh, Britton returned a kick for a touchdown. You know, Kaufman had a great game getting um, the V8 into scoring position, uh, but had to settle for, you know, field goals as, uh, as Vegas, you know, his red zone defense was too much. You know, they made it uh, 10 to 24. Motor City ended up uh, in the first half with a, with a great run pass mix and just couldn't score from the red zone. Again, they had to settle for a field goal, stopping Las Vegas from scoring by getting a, a key red zone interception. It was 13 24 to end the half. You know, Price got uh, Vegas up even more with another passing touchdown to go 31 13. Motor City seemed to be, you know, but the defense really stepped up, creating a turnover, and you know, thought it really would give them that spark they needed, but they weren't able to capitalize. Las Vegas continued to pound and pound Motor City with the high-powered offense as they scored 45 to 13 at the end of the third. The fourth quarter was 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 really good. Uh, they were able to get a couple of field goals and a touchdown. Uh, and Kaufman, you know. Uh, he made it a uh, twenty-six to fifty-two. It was it was a. Uh, if you just look at the score, you don't know what the game was. I mean, mm-hmm. it was a lot more fun and exciting than what that score showed. So so props to <clears throat> both teams in that game, and and even though the score was like that, I mean the defense does step up. You you just got to watch some of these games. You do, you do, and in order to get that full like um. The, the the full like ambiance I should say of the game, you know, the full understanding of how what actually happened. Because yeah, you said yeah. like the, the scores can look one way and then you say, Oh, that was a butt whooping, but like no, it really wasn't. Yeah. Like it was a heavy defensive battle, like the Carolina DC game. But um I chose Houston and Fort Worth as my first game. Um Fort Worth won 38 to 16. Uh Houston been trying to get over this hump you know i don't know what's going on maybe they're trying different looks different schemes but it's just seemingly not working for them right this moment um they did have 269 yards passing with 70 yards rushing and 339 total in comparison to fort worth's 409 yards passing 68 yards rushing and then they had 417 total um both teams held the ball for pretty much the same time it's only two seconds where this is the difference in this game um houston had it for 21 uh minutes and 46 seconds and uh yeah two seconds um and fort worth had it for 21 44 difference another difference was fort worth threw one more interception than houston did because houston had three fort worth had four houston scored their points three points in the six quarter uh six i'm sorry Six points in the second quarter, three points in the third quarter, and seven points in the fourth quarter, where um, Fort Worth scored seven points in the first and second quarters, 10 points in the third, and 14 in the fourth quarter. The player of the game was quarterback Marcus Dunhill, going 32 for 43. He had 400 yards passing, three touchdowns, and a quarterback rating of 87.4. Um, shout out to Fort Worth's Cade Stevens, uh, Charlie Bark, uh, Baker, and Stephen Hacken. Stick Hacken. <laughs> Hark- Hacker, I cannot talk to that. Words are hard. Um, they all had one touchdown. Jay Z Bacon, um, running back for Fort Worth, had two touchdowns. Aiden Davis had two interceptions, and Ben Stone had one. Houston, DR Sims, and Greg Corky came out with a touchdown each. And Corey Beener had two interceptions. Derek Law, Zed Markoff, and JW Hartshorn all came out with one interception. So, valiant effort from the crew, but it seems like they just kind of. By them not scoring, by Houston not scoring any points in the uh, first quarter, put the nail in the coffin for him. So, Diggy, who do you got next? Uh, I- I'm still going to kind of mention it. I'm not going to go over it because of the time stuff, but I did the Louisiana Florida game. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Boletsky. Um, had a great game. And mm-hmm. even a shout out to uh, Utah. I mean, he struggled in the game. Um, you know, throwing against that defense and stuff, but he he still came out and was able to bomb it 
and and what he pulled out of his hat at the end of the game to get that touchdown to say, hey, I still got it. And then, you know, for that, that, that game, it was still good. Defensively, that was a good game. And I just wanted to shout those two out real quick. Um, I did, of course, Indy and the legend. That was that was a great one. Um, it's always a great one between those two. Mm-hmm. It's it's built up as a good rivalry. The league really, you know, puts it in the in the prime time spot, and and it has not disappointed yet. So hopefully that continues for them. It can be a great rivalry for for a long time to come. But uh, Indy's defense and offense started off great, uh, but they had to settle for a field goal. Once Minnesota uh, Minnesota was able to uh, stop them, and uh, they got you know the first points of the game, you know, so Indy was up three to nothing at the end of the first. Uh, Malolo doinked one, but it was uh, it was okay because uh, Axel Raven got that pick six. Shout out to Axel, second one of his career. Props to him. Good job, brother. Uh, got him up seven to three. Minnesota, uh, they got uh, another interception on the next drive. And to start the second, Reno hits uh, Simons for a, for a touchdown to go up 14-3. to uh, There was one point in this game that, that, man, I had flashbacks. I had, I had great Devin Hester flashbacks. I really thought that was like a trick punt play, you know, that kick return or punt return, I, I really thought there was something going to happen there, but they, they did trick me. And uh, I don't know what happened there, but they only got out to the 12-yard line. Did you see that? Sorry, That's I was not- muted. Sorry, I was muted. But yeah, I yeah. did. I did. That was totally dope, man. You can't. Yeah, I really wish that if that was even if that was a mess up by the AI, if that would have worked, that would have been the most amazing play <laughs> I think I've seen. <laughs> I, I was really hoping for, for a Devin. I was like, oh, man, we got Devin Hester, SFL. Here we go now. Uh, but, yeah, prop, props to all that. Uh, you know, yeah, Minnesota gets a few next possession going up 17 to three. Uh, and it stayed that way until the half. You know, Colin Pierce hit uh, Rob Hunt in the third to get Indy closer, ten to seventeen. Minnesota failed to get a, a touchdown after looking good, settling for a field goal to make it twenty to ten, keeping their lead. Uh, next possession, Reno found France in the in the end zone and got him up twenty seven to ten. That score stayed until the third. So I mean, even just shows they could score, but the defenses were still playing well. Uh, Indy uh, started the fourth with a field goal by Kiefer to make it 27 to 13. Pierce hits uh, Banfield in the end zone with four minutes left to, to, to get it 27 to 20. Two minutes left, Hart finds the end zone to make it 34 to 19. But, you know, Indy ended this game with determination and excitement as they drove down the field and hit Viper to make it 34 26. But, like I said, as always, Indy versus Minnesota, it does not disappoint. Both teams had some amazing defensive plays. Um, the props to to Indy for a great job, uh, and and a great job they did defending against Reno because we you know Reno's went off the first half of the season. So uh, even though they took the L, uh, that defense did a did a great job still. Oh man, that was a great game. That was it was a much anticipated game, and when and it's like. Quenching your thirst because you finally saw what you wanted to see, and they gave you a good game. You know, I have it, Axel on. What I like is one of the, it's not one of these blowout rivalries that you see. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You're like, oh man, this per- this team's always getting their butt kicked. Mm-hmm. And if mm-hmm. somebody's Bay Packers, you getting kicked out of here. <laughs> I don't want to hear that Bay Packers stuff. <laughs> Yeah, but it's always, it's always yeah. something to look I'll forward talk, to. Talk to Ashley and we'll, we'll talk about a suspension. <laughs> that part. <laughs> <laughs> but I, my last game I had to do was, of course, ours. Arizona taking on London, a rivalry of our own. And uh, it was a good game. 52 to 31 in favor of Arizona. Um, now, as you mentioned before, I was sick during this game. I was not going to actually go in voice chat at first because I wasn't sure how that was going to turn out. 
And I didn't know, I didn't want my heart to be broken. Then I'm just over here already sick. So I was just, at first I was, but I was like, no, let me just go in there with the team. And I'm glad I did. Um, London mm-hmm. had 354 yards passing, only 30 yards rushing though. And holding um, Robert Merrill to 30 yards, I think definitely held, helped us in the long run with that. Um, they only had 384 yards of total offense. They held a ball 17 minutes, 25 seconds with three mistakes. Um, <clears throat> they scored seven points in the first quarter, 17 points in the second, seven points in the third, and nothing in the fourth quarter where Arizona firing on all cylinders, 480 yards passing, 129 yards rushing for 609 yards of total offense. Um, we held the ball 26 minutes, two seconds, two mistakes. One was an interception and one was a fumble by DJ. DJ, you still owe us some push-ups. Why he calling me out on missing one? You still owe about, uh, I guess, about 30 now. So you better get on them. We scored 21 points in the first quarter, 14 points in the second, third quarters, and three points to end things off to hit that 50 mark, 50 burger mark um, in the fourth quarters. Um, People say I should have been player of the game, 480 yards. Uh, I don't have no idea what my quarterback rating was. Um, It has to be probably like maybe 130, definitely over 130. Um, 84% completion rating, five passing touchdowns, only um, one interception. I was only sacked one time. So, um, Eddie put together a fantastic game plan. Um, 39 completions out of 46 attempts as well. Um, but Eddie definitely put he he put his foot in that, you know, for all the old timer and people that you did your thing there. But I must give props to Fox Highwind for his two reception touchdowns, as well as Vin Clea with one. Also, big shout out to Terrence Reary. He had nine kick returns, 295 yards and one kick return touchdown. And that was 104 yards. That man ran for he had a destined uh, a Devin Hester like performance with that one. Um, totally wasn't expecting that. Um, also, shout out to Tony Roberto for getting one interception. He was supposed to be on the show tonight, but unfortunately he had to work. So I'm going to try to have him on next week. We're going to talk about it. And uh, Anthony Wyo had 13 tackles. Um, and, oh, Tony Roberto also had the sack too. So he, Tony was doing some work. Now, on our side of the ball, of course, I got to give shout outs to DJ Moses for his 133 rushing yards and two touchdowns. <clears throat> um, Ryan Owens, Justin Williams had two um, touchdowns, and Connor Weston also had a touchdown too. Um, we had a few interceptions too. So, Iverson Gamble, shout out. Parker Thomas, they kept testing Parker on his side. They kept throwing it over his head, but I said, if you're going to keep doing it, Parker's going to snag one, and he did towards the end of the game. And yep. Everett Garrison, um, Sachs, Hunter Norwood, and Alex um, Constantine had one as well. So, like I said, great game to watch. It was a shootout at first, but then it start, we start pulling away, and London couldn't do anything about it. So that's how it all ended. But uh, good games all yeah, around. Was, uh, Go ahead. Tied, uh, fr- tied franchise record for most points scored, you know. Mm-hmm. And you had a new personal record, five touchdowns. It was four. So yeah. good job. Good. Hey. And uh, props to the offensive line Yeah, for holding up. All game, man. One, one. So, oh, that one play where I thought I was sacked and then actually wound up <laughs> chucking the ball downfield, bro. I still yeah, don't know see, how that happened. See, I, I told her, I told her in the locker room, I said, "This is where all those push-ups paid off." You just told that person, "Get off me!" I don't think so. You were chucking them, two or three of them, shoving them off, and then you still threw that thing. I said, <sighs> "Yeah, you better quit doing those push-ups." <laughs> That. So with all the interceptions well, I throw, I better do them so I can go down there and tackle somebody. Shoot, but man, you keep doing these push Guys, gonna look uh, a lot bigger than some of these linebackers and stuff. So you better chill out a little bit. <laughs> I'll think about it. Week six actions. Now two teams are searching for it within this this week six. Two teams will be searching for their first win. Three teams are trying to stay undefeated. 
and six teams are sitting at two and two. It's going to be a heck of a fight either way. So we have first up. Now, of course, this is actually off the website because we don't have the actual listing as of right now. Um, the website is www.simulationfl.net. And two and two, Denver Nightwings is going to be taking on the one and four London Knights in Queensway on February the 18th. Diggy, who do you got? Hey, well, just a second here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that so Denver versus London. Yeah, Denver's two and two. London is one and four. Who you got? And Queensway. Yeah, I'm gonna go London this week. Mm. Yeah, they they they're really hard to beat in uh Queensway, especially with them being down um only one one game all season. Yeah, I don't I don't think that they're going one and five. So I agree with you on that. LA 0 oh, and 4 will be taking on the Tulsa Desperados 2 and 2 at Greenwood District Stadium. I just want to see more out of out of LA, you know. Um I I have to go into Tulsa with this one because you know, at least Tulsa is even right now. And I think LA has been trying some things that just haven't been working out for them, much like Houston. I'm going to side with you on that one as well. I'm going, I'm going Tulsa. Okay. The Charleston Predators will be taking on the Fort Worth Toros. Now Charleston is sitting at one and three and Tulsa, I'm sorry, Fort Worth is uh, even two and two. Who do you have? And they're going to be playing at the stockyards too. Yeah, even playing at the stockyard, I think this will be a good game. Still, I think this will be a good game. Uh, so I'm going to go love those guys over there at Charleston, but I think Fort Worth's going to be a little bit, a little bit too much. Yeah, I agree. Especially when they're at home, they do have some kind of magic. Um, I, I chose against them last week and they were at home. So I'm not doing that again. But the four and zero Baltimore Vultures will be taking on the one and three Houston Headhunters at Jules Simeon Stadium. Got to go with Baltimore, uh, and I said I'm going to be going with Baltimore until somebody, until we play them, basically, until some or until somebody proves that they have that 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 scheme to be able to take care of them. Well, there, like I've said before, there's always that game that you don't expect to lose that that gets pulled over on you um i just kind of don't see that this this week so i'm right. going baltimore okay also on now you know i take chance i picked against them before i take chances but i i can't do it this way i, I can't yeah i know i know <laughs> <laughs> on the 18th also on the 18th um jacksonville kings that's sitting at two and two will be taking on the seattle nemesis sitting at one and three at seattle nemesis stadium should be a good game diggy who do you got jacksonville started off so strong um but i i gotta pull for seattle this week yeah, especially since Seattle is at home. I think that they're going to want to be in two and three. Um, whatever magic that Jacksonville had is starting to fizzle out. So they need to find it again. That's all, you know. Uh, San Diego Mavericks sitting at three and one will be taking on the Canton Classic sitting at two and two at Fatherhood Festival Field. It's going to be a good game. Um But I think Mike Twinscrew has a plan for San Diego. So I'm going to go with Canton on this. Uh, this is... Canton can come out of nowhere. But this is a... This is a... This is a pretty much a... I think this feels like a playoff game for Canton with mm -hmm. how hot San Diego and so yeah. uh, I, I gotta go San Diego but um, nothing against Canton like I said Canton kind of has 
they're they're kind of right there a little bit with Carolina to me. They can come out of nowhere and they can stomp the gas, and they have the talent to do it. But I think uh, San Diego pulls this one out. Okay, gotcha. On the nineteenth. Oh, sorry. Now that game was actually going to be on on the nineteenth, and this one it will be too. The Queen City Corsairs looking for their first win, zero and four. Um, we'll be taking on the Motor City V8, sitting at one and four, at Bank Michigan Stadium. Um, I think that this is the week that Queen City will receive their first win. Um, Motor City, Drew, really great coach, great schemes he comes with. With I mean, they almost with you know they almost beat us. Um, but I think Queen City is going to have that magic this week. What say you? You would, do, you would do this to me because I, I was going to say the same thing. How? I thought QCC was going to get their first win. That, get out of my head, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> We've been around each other too long. That's what that is. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Also, uh-huh. up on that. teaming oh. up on that one. Yeah, QC, <laughs> QCC will get their first win this season this week, uh, but it, it will it won't be a gimme for them. They're going to have to work for it because we know Motor City's defense can step up. It's just if Motor City's offense gets rolling, it's going to be a match for them. So uh, they just need to keep that in check. All right. Uh, also on the 19th, Carolina Skyhawks sitting at 3-1. and one. We'll be taking on the Alamo City Artillery at NordVPN Stadium. Oh, um, and Alamo City is 1-3 and three at that. So I'm going to let you pick first, Diggy. What do you got? Man, I, I, don't, I hate to sound like a parrot. <clears throat> Carolina has so much fight in them. And ACA doesn't roll over either. So there's some kind of fire in Carolina. There, there, there is with this team. Um I got to go Carolina this week. I'm I got to go. I, uh. <laughs> I agree. Got the red on, man. I, I got to agree. Uh, Carolina is showing us who they could be all along, you know. And Alamo City is definitely going to have to beef up their defense in order to compete with that. So if they can do that, they stand a chance. Otherwise, Carolina is going to take this game. Two and three DC Dragons will be taking on a three and two Mexico City Aztecs at Estadio Matt Wilson. Um, two great coaches here. They've been around for a very long time. Um, but both of them have that fight, but I think I'm going to go side with Mexico on this. They're not going to make this easy. Uh, dragons are not going to make this easy. I think it's going to be such a small margin that it's probably going to be either where from a field goal or a touchdown, but I'm going with Mexico city. Um, oh, I hate to do this. I I'm siding with, uh, you as well on this one. I think Mexico city, um, comes out with the win this week. Uh, you know, say Destro, I love you guys. But uh, I I got to go with him this week. Uh, now you know Destro puts that work in. You know mm-hmm. what you what you saw last week. That could that, I mean that could be just a an off week for them. And DC has already shown. Like I said, Mexico's got to prepare for more than just the say show. So they've got they've got some stuff working over there. And uh, let's see if it all lines out for them. And Good luck. Indeed. Also, last game. Well, we don't know that, but one of the last games will be the Arizona Scorpions sitting at 5-0, and oh, taking on the Las Vegas Fury at Silver State Stadium. They are 3-1. and one. It's going to be a very tough game. Of course, I'm going to say Arizona is going to win, but we cannot take any opponent lightly, but especially them. With the performances that they have had, um, over the last three weeks, they're tough cookies, especially when you have Doug Britton, when you have Max Jackson, you have all these people over here that can't wait to take the ball out of your hands and give you know their offense a chance. 
to score. Yeah. So Arizona, I'm going to pick us to win, but we better bring our A game just like we had to do last week. Oh, man. Uh, I'm not going to pick against us, but I, but I'm going to say that they have been on fire. They have? They look so good. They have looked so good. Uh, to me, this, not just because I play for them, this is game of the week. This is game of the week right here. Arizona, Las Vegas. Um, we've, we've got our own stuff in there, um, but I'm going to close this little spill out with this. You know, the Phoenix looks all good and spectacular before it burns into ash and rises again later. So hopefully this is the past couple of weeks. It's been the, the big, strong Phoenix that everybody's used to seeing. And then it kind of goes to ash this week and we, and we pull out a dub and uh, they rise again after our week, have a hell of a good season, the rest of and, and, and we'll see where it goes from there. Wait a so minute, Diggy. We good play luck to twice. Las Vegas. Uh, I know <laughs> they can have a good season later. <laughs> That's the cycle. That's the cycle of Phoenix. It it rises from the ashes, does good, and then <clears throat> burns up again. <laughs> so we we can get that twice. It's a cycle. It repeats itself. It repeats itself. <laughs> so oh, God. no no shade on you guys. I, I love you guys. Indeed, it's going to be a heck of a game. I cannot wait. I'm super super excited for this one. And um, let's all go ball out and put on a show. Like, like we always do. Last game of the week will be Sioux Falls Sparrows. Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay. Sioux Falls Sparrows sitting at two and two, taking on the the Atlanta Swarm. Four and O oh as well at the hive. Uh Atlanta has been on fire as well. You know, one of those undefeated teams that wish to remain undefeated. Um with um with Williams over there doing the defense, they have definitely been been showing proof. Um, he does it during the SFLM. He does it even now. So I'm going to go with Atlanta on this, especially when they're at home at the Hive. They are a very tough cookie to beat. Diggy, who do you have? Uh, I think... Something's pulling me to say Sioux Falls, okay. but I, I got to go with Atlanta. I got to go with Atlanta. Something, Something's pulling me to say Sioux Falls, but I'm just, uh, Atlanta. All right. Get now. Out of my ear. Yeah. All right. Then you're going to be mad at yourself. <laughs> God, man, something was pulling me. Well, you should have let him pull you. <laughs> well, you know what? You know what? What what's Sioux Falls right now? Two and two. They playing at the hive. I'm not gonna change it because if I change it and they get smoked, I'll look even dumber now. So I'm a, I'm just gonna keep my cards how they are. Me. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no. Love that Dick. We... I love that. Hot topic question. It's from Sean Big Dog Moore. And he wants to know if we should add a separate channel for schedules only. Now, some of the responses to his <coughs> requests were um, check the league website, uh, league alerts, broadcast alerts. But it's kind of the point that he's trying to make. You have so many different areas where you can go and try to find the schedule. You can even go on Twitter. You can kind of look it up from there. But if we can have one centralized place um, that we can just look and say, okay, this is schedules only per week. It's right here. It don't have to be posted in any other channel, but right there. I think it could work personally, but what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it kind of makes sense as long as it would be capped where the only people that could post in that channel would be like, the broadcast stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. Cam, uh, Oakmish, and 
and the broadcasters like when they release hey this is the time for this week they can put because you don't want to fill it up with everybody putting oh we played this person this week we play this person this week we play this exactly. person today no no great this is the set the schedule like from the youtube we release right mm-hmm. when cam comes out and says hey this season schedule for everybody you can post those pictures in there and then once a week put time date when they release for who's broadcasting or announcing the games just post that in there nobody nobody can comment no nothing and that's it it's just one specific place for everybody to look because i brought up to eddie um the website's wrong if you go to week 10 i think uh who was it it was Baltimore and us play the same team. I think mm. I don't mm-hmm. have my internet. You can if you can pull it up. Let me see. You said that was week ten. Yeah, week ten on the schedule on the website. Baltimore. Seems like uh, they have us playing the Skyhawks and Baltimore playing San Diego. So they may have corrected it. Yeah, he may have corrected it. Well, when I went, mm-hmm. it was Baltimore and us played the same team the same week. It was either week nine or week 10, one of those two. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, I guess that, I guess, it, uh, but you know, you may see something different right. where, where you go and, uh, some people, when when they post these uh, the stuff in the in the announcements or the gen chat, like I talked about before, a lot of people don't stay up to date with the gen chat stuff, so stuff can get lost in the mix. So you'll have people pop in there, "Hey, what's this?" Well, did you scroll up? Cause some, that was told twenty minutes ago. No, they want to see it there. They want to see it like I'm here for a second. I only have a couple minutes. I want to see what the the thing is for tonight. Maybe I'm working. One tab, click, there it is, done. Boom. You know? Right. So and it could be useful in that as long as, like I said, it's it's locked and nobody else can talk. I can see the what he's talking about there. Uh, because other somebody said, hey, that was posted a couple hours ago, and you're, you're scrolling and, and trying to look. or You know what I'm saying? So Exactly. And as many people as 2,000, I think it was 2,245 people in this server. People talk? No. I think that's a great idea. All right, on to our fourth and goal interviews. Coming right up. All right, SFL Nation, welcome back to my fourth and goal interview featuring a really, really good friend of mine, Mr. Tom Welsh. He is the head coach over there in Queen City Corsairs that is having um, a tough season right now, you know? So, Tom, before we get into all the SFL stuff, how have you been doing? What's been going on? Been good. Been super busy, you know, things are are good in the Welsh household, so we're just kind of cruising along. Uh, Excited to talk to you again. It's always fun to chat with you so i'm excited to help out in any way i'm glad I'm, I'm always glad to help you know that you helped me out especially with my um my graphics that you've made for me before all of that yep. good stuff so i just wanted to personally thank you in front of everybody yeah. for that you know? no need you're good man <laughs> <laughs> so um tough start for the season you know uh <laughs> I was wondering, man, what what are you, what's going on? Okay, so let me let me prerequisite this by saying, like, when I talked to Mighty, right, he was telling me that they were trying some new uh, schemes, some new player schemes, just trying something new, and it's just not really panning out for them right now. Um, is that your case too, or what's going on over there? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Uh, you know, with new ownership kind of coming in and and us kind of working together, we're we're trying to find what fits best, and and I think that this past week yesterday our offense really got going um and it was just the defense that was tough and and with having six or so rookies on the defense it's gonna be tough so we're trying to figure out 
how we can put the guys in, in a good situation and, and leave them. So we're not getting burned a ton on, on defense. And, you know, we've had two, two weeks this season where the AI calls what the AI wants to call and it has kind of cost us two victories. So we're, we're easily two and two, but right now we're and four and that's just kind of where we're, where we're at right now. We're, we're trying new things. I think the offense finally got going this past week and Mm -hmm. I think we're in a good spot there. Now we just got to get the defense on track and get the guys there and, and continuing to progress and continuing to build them up and find schemes and stuff that, that work well for them. Um, so six rookies is tough, but did it last year and we, we were successful. So we just got to figure out a way to, to make that work. Indeed. And every game that I've watched you guys play, you've been in there, you know, mm-hmm. it's not like it's been a total blowout or anything like that. So, you know, I think it's just a little bit more tweaks and things like that, that you guys need to do. And having six rookies on defense does play a big difference, you know? Yeah. Big time. And it's, you know, it's it's nice that it's almost worse in my mind that we're in these games because it's like we're we're getting super involved and then something funky happens and then it's super frustrating but it's just a testament to the guys that they keep progressing and keep you know building their players up and and dedicating their time and their money and their efforts to it and and it'll happen it'll we'll turn it around um i'm not worried about it i just know that it's frustrating for them as well as us as coaches and owners to to you know put in the time and put in the work and and not see the fruit of our labors kind of come through so having two games that were taken away from us by ai is tough but you just kind of move forward and move on and, and continue to progress and and scheme and, and get better so indeed indeed um what is the general vibe of the locker room right now i think it's pretty positive i think the guys understand like this is a growing step and and something that we're working on and and getting better and i think that they are fully on board and and ready to kind of rock with us while we do this and and continue to build. Um, Certainly frustrating for all of us owners and and everybody involved that we're close and we're not there yet. And it's, you know, you think you have one thing and then another thing happens, but overall I would say that we're all pretty upbeat and pretty positive, pretty, pretty chirpy in a good way in the room and, and really just kind of, you know, working working hard to get there for sure gotcha how difficult is it for you being a coach putting all this work and effort and time in in what you do and how do you block out the naysayers the people that have so much negativity to say you know just so you can be able to concentrate on what you have to do yeah it's tough um i wouldn't say that it fuels me or it or it drives me or or brings me down but it just it's more so for the guys in the locker room and and the people that put in that time you know i i want them to feel like this is worth their time and worth their energy and a hobby that they can grow with and continue to get better with so it's it's more so them that drives me over anything else and I think we have a good core of of owners and a good core in the locker room that we're all staying, you know, upbeat, like I said earlier, and we're, we're all just grinding. And, you know, the game is so unique and so different. And next season, it's going to be completely different to everybody and completely new to everybody. So I think we're all just kind of riding this wave and, and trying to do the best we can. And, you know, if, If people think we're doing good, doing bad, not doing the right thing, not doing the, you know, doing the wrong thing, it's, it's their opinions and they're valid and in that. And it's, it's my job to try and change that and trying to make it better. And I mean, last season, our offense was down at the bottom, but our defense was pretty good. And we were in the playoff hunt up until the last week. And, and now we're just kind of mulling it over with three or six rookies on defense. So we're, we're trying to write that ship. So it's, it's always something new and it's always going to be somebody. Somebody's going to try and knock you down off a, off a pedestal that you're on. You just got to continue to push. And as long as the guys on your team in the locker room are happy, it's all that really matters to me. Indeed. Tom, what would you say your coaching philosophy is? Coaching philosophy. Mm-hmm. I would say, I mean, it's kind of funny because being a real life coach in, in the real world, it's, it's, you know, positivity and communication and, 
and fun and pushing kids and people to be better than themselves. And I would say in this, in this realm, it's, it's pretty similar in that sense where it's, you know, I want the, the guys in the room to be happy, to have a good time, to enjoy themselves and not get down on the coaches or the schemes or anything like that. And understand that, you know, we're putting in hours upon hours of week just to make sure that they're, getting what they want out of it. And we take it really, you know, really hard when it doesn't go our way. So I would say that the styles are pretty similar from the real world to the SFL world, where I just want to to build a good environment for these people and to make sure that they're getting everything that they want out of this situation, whether it be in the real world, the SFL world, making sure that they're happy and content and, and, and being, talk to along the way and just having that open line of communication. Indeed. Indeed. Now for a moment, you were over the social media team mm-hmm. and I was wondering, ooh. <laughs> 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 I was wondering, mm-hmm. would you, I hit the wrong button, by the way, right. <laughs> would, you, would you um ever consider getting back into that? Like maybe once the, once the coaching kind of coasts where you wanted to go and things of that nature. Would you ever I like think to get so. Back to- yeah. yeah, I think so. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed doing it. Um, it got to a point where it was, you know, during COVID and it was SFL was my life for the most part because COVID was non-existent because the kids aren't doing anything. So I, I got to dedicate a ton of time to the lead and, and to help grow it. And I love it. And then once things started opening back up and we were back to the real world of work and stuff like that, it just became a lot to coach to SFL team or an SFL team, SFLM team doing the world stuff. And, and it got to a point where I just was, was able to perform the way that I wanted to perform. Um, now I think, you know, once we get things a little bit settled down in a better groove, I would love to, to help out in any sort of way that I can and, and kind of continue to be that, that league staff or, or just whatever anybody needs. If, if they need help with graphics or video stuff, like I'm, I'm down to help and, and do that. So I, I, enjoy, it's, it's part of my, my passion when I do graphic design and stuff. So I, I love doing it. And I mean, whether or not it's for the league or just for teams or whatever, like I'm, I'm here to help and I'm always here to help anybody. So. And he does a really good job, y'all. <laughs> you see his graphics throughout my show, but yeah, he, he does a really good job too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so what brought you into the SFL in the first place and why do you stay? Yeah, I it was it was right during COVID spread and I lived just down the street from you know Johnny Pickler and and never knew him and and never met him before and saw a news you know news video of him and it was done by an old co-worker of mine when i worked in news so like i had seen it on his facebook and i was like oh this sounds really cool and i had you know i, I remember channel surfing one day and saw it but didn't thought anything of it and just after seeing that news you know that news clip i was like i'm gonna shout and then you know facebook message and then found discord and and then kind of hopped in head first and really just you know, found it kind of by accident, but kind of not. So it was it was a really cool thing to jump into, and it was something that I always wanted to do, but never knew it actually existed. Like I always loved fantasy sports, and I always loved the you know management side of video games when you're playing them. So it's like a combination of both. So it's like, oh, this is really cool, and then just to be able to do it, I was like, well, this is this is everything that I had wanted from fantasy sports to video games, everything like that. So it was, it was really cool to kind of see that just by random and then fall into it. And then boom, there it is just time consuming my whole freaking life for, you know, months on end and, and just being fully invested, which was super awesome. Um, So it was a really interesting, different way of finding the league just by complete random on one random day, just, channel surfing and then looking on Facebook and the internet and stuff. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, what now this is kind of like real life questions. First of all, you mentioned that you coached in real life. What do you, what do you coach and how is that going? So I coach, I coach women's volleyball um, okay. out in the suburbs of Chicago here. And 
I am a head coach at a junior college uh, here. And then I also am a club director for a AAU club travel volleyball program here. We have 18 teams and 200 plus girls and it consumes a lot of my time and yeah. energy and, and stuff like that. But I love, love coaching kids, love helping them kind of get to the next level. Uh, parents on the other hand or something else, but <laughs> I, I do it for the kids. And I try to tell myself that every day that it's for the kids and, and, and stuff like that. So it's like the Juco world, the Juco job is that, you know, fills my competitive itch. Whereas the club world kind of, you know, makes me happy in the sense that I get to see these 10, 11, 12 year olds and then up get better and grow and stuff. So that's, that's, what's really fun and cool about that. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's what I do from, you know, nine to five, or as my wife likes to call it every single day of the week. Um, <laughs> so it's pretty busy. Like today we had, I think we had eight teams playing this weekend all over the state. And I'm like, I'm going to stay home and watch football. I'm not going to do anything. And so it's the first day off I've had since probably mid-December. So oh. Um, yeah, oh, it's yeah. pretty gnarly. <laughs> Ooh, yes. Yeah. February to now, you got to make sure you're taking care of yourself, Tom, because that's a <laughs> and we're lot. Like, we're, we're, right. We're right in the heart of the season, so it's it's tough to to find time, but I try to, like, sneak in a couple hours here and there. Like, you know, I don't, I don't consider a day off until my brain shuts down. So it's like if I get an email or text message and, you know, phone call from a parent or something, like, my brain has to be on work mode every day of of the week so it's crazy i can imagine i can definitely imagine <laughs> oh my gosh yeah can't um <laughs> who's your next opponent sfo oh god who's that game play? motor city maybe motor city i think That's a great question i haven't even looked hold on one second i have a schedule here too i haven't even really looked because i had it pulled up but then i went to something else let me see yeah, let me pull Maybe you can get it before teams. I can. We're in week five. That's Denver. It was this week. Yeah, Motor City. Motor City. Okay. Yep. Now you're going against a Motor City uh, V8 team that mm -hmm. you know Drew is very smart. He is very clever. Mm -hmm. He can figure out. What you're doing, and really try to throw a wrench in. I know when we when we played him, he gave us fits during practice. Yeah. Um. So how do you plan on taking, you know, taking that win over Motor City? I mean, you don't have to give away <sighs> coaching secrets and things like that. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, Drew. Drew has taught me a lot in my time when I, you know, I first came in with St. Louis, and yeah. Drew and Dwayne and Colin and I were we're working really close together and. I I value his opinion more so than a lot of people just because of his view on things and, and stuff like that. So him and I talked a lot last season. I uh, talked a little bit this season so far, but but yeah, he is tough, and I never know what to do when it comes to their you know their offense or their defense. We we were lucky enough last season to pull out a win against them and. We had changed a few things on defense that really helped us. Um, so I, you know, my my biggest, you know, hurdle right now is our defense and trying to figure out how we can stop giving up forty plus points a game. And they can do that pretty pretty quickly against us if we don't get it right. So I need to need to figure out what we're doing or get some advice from people that know more than I do on the defensive side and kind of see what they think we can do. But, you know, having six rookies is tough and it's not an excuse, but it's, it's something that we got to figure out because the guys deserve better and, and they deserve more than an O and four start, even though it should be two and two, we're O and four on the record. So. What do you think about the new game we're switching to? I'm pumped. I am super stoked for it. I was one of the ones that have been just kind of always wanting to see what other options were out there mm -hmm. and, you know, looking at what we can do from a, you know, um, customizable side as well as the gameplay side. Like there's so much more 
things that appeal to what we're trying to do as a league that we can be done in this in this new version of what we're going to do. So I'm excited to see what we can do. It kind of really levels the playing field entirely, which is something that a lot of the older heads that have been dominating this league for a long time don't like, which is completely valid and understandable, but it gives the younger and newer people a little bit more even footing and, and trying to figure out and 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 learn the nuances of this game. So it's going to be weird. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun, but there will be some hiccups along the way. So I think overall it's going to be a positive for the league, and I trust Cam and his decisions. And, I mean, he hasn't done anything really wrong thus far, so why why question the man now? You know, this is this is his livelihood, and this is what he does for a living. So, you know. If if it goes wrong, it's on him. If it goes right, it's on him. So it's you know, let him let him let him do what he wants to do. It's I think it's for a positive though. Exactly because I don't <laughs> think I do not think by this being Cam's livelihood that he would put his livelihood in any danger. Right. So exactly. if he gets to this this game and it doesn't work, mm, yeah, I'm sure he's going to scrap it and stay where we at. But what got <laughs> me, I learned during this last um, exhibition game. Mm-hmm. That they can actually they well they may be able to put our actual faces that's so on cool. our players that's so cool and I was like yes that'd be great and then you now you're really in the game oh for sure <laughs> right like there's so many new and cool things that we can do from the customization standpoint that it's it's gonna get more people involved because of that fact alone just you know seeing yourself on TV and you know, being more invested in it. It's going to be super, super cool. And I'm, I'm excited for it. Definitely. Yeah. Possibilities are endless. Even when you're creating your stadiums, when you're creating your uniforms, Mm -hmm. it's almost overwhelming how much you can actually do, but I could, I can definitely see people going really crazy and just creating some Mm -hmm. really good stuff. You know, that's going to be sweet. I'm stoked for it. Definitely. Few personal questions for you. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the worst advice that someone has ever given you that you said, you know what? I, why in the heck did I listen to this person? Oh my God. Worst advice. Mm-hmm. There've been some, I had, I remember I used to love drawing and painting when I was a kid. And okay. when I got to high school, I, would, I freshman year took a took like a drawing 101 or painting or whatever the hell it was. And I had this super sexist teacher that never is very much a really creep show kind of guy and just really only mm-hmm. paid attention to the girls. And and no matter what I did, he always tore it down. Mm-hmm. And I remember him saying one time that I wasn't creative enough or it was along the lines of why are you in this class? You're not creative or something along those lines. And it, it really turned me away from drawing and painting and doing all this stuff that as a kid I loved and would spend hours doing it and just letting my brain kind of flow. And that turned me off for a long time. And you know, now when I do graphic design and stuff like that, I always, or video work even, or photography, like I always have that in the back of my mind, like, is this creative enough? And it's one of those things that I guess kind of fuels me in a way that that I don't realize, but also is like super bad advice for a 14, 15 year old that mm-hmm. really enjoys something. So yeah, it's... It's a weird thing because it's like on one hand, it's a negative. But if you look at it and try and flip it, it could be a super positive thing that drives you and fuels you for stuff. So I would say that I'm sure there's some more other stupid stuff coaches have told me or stuff that I've learned. Like, I mean, I remember my old high school volleyball coach uh, when he came in, he was new my junior year and nobody really liked him. Nobody really cared for him. And and senior year, he just sat me after getting scholarship offers and all this stuff. And I'm like, what, like, what do you know? You don't know anything. And 
And it wasn't until this year he actually passed away, or last year he passed away. And I went to his, you know, service and saw his wife and his kids. And and I realized how much of an impact he had on me. All this time I thought it was negative, but I was like, well, you taught me how to not be this way. And now I do that on an everyday basis. So it was very interesting in that sense where it's like this person that I disliked for so long because of how he treated me uh, was very just one sided. Like I only thought of it as one side and didn't think of it another way until it was too late. Um, so it was very interesting. Those those types of things, those 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 negative things that happen in the moment you know, how you can look back on them and try to flip them into a positive and, and stuff. So it's weird. I try, I try and always, especially with teaching kids all the time, just try to remain positive and, and what they can use. Or like, you know, if I put a kid on, on a lower team that they think they deserve, like, okay, prove me wrong. Like mm -hmm. you doing your job, proving me wrong is what I absolutely want you to do. So they're turning this negative into a positive and, and making it better. So Okay. <laughs> I like that. I like yeah. that. Because a lot of people do tend to focus on the negative mm -hmm. and, and not look at what it could be, you yeah. know? So it's good it's stuff. Tough. It really is tough. But it is. Just, I try every day. It's like I get super reactive and emotional when it comes to certain responses I give to, to parents or kids. And I try to always take a step back and think like, okay, how do I need to respond? Do, is like not responding right now the best course of action which nine times out of ten it is so it's yeah it's very interesting when you look at things like that okay what is the strangest or let me see the the strangest thing you've ever eaten like for me it was recently those scorpion lollipops i don't know if you saw my video <laughs> yeah yeah well, it's, so it's, <laughs> it's definitely got to be some sort of bug or I've like had octopus once like fresh and it was like, you just got to keep chewing it or else oh. it's going to get stuck down your throat. So it, yeah, it's got to be some sort of bug or, or crustacean or something like that. I, I used to like being experimental when it comes to food. Now I'm just like, nah, we're good. <laughs> Chicken, turkey, meat. Like we're fine. <laughs> like just stick to the basics. So you actually had the octopus while it was live? Uh, it was, well, it, it was fresh. They cut off the tentacles. So they were still moving a little bit. Um, and they were just like, yeah, you just like put some lemon on it and just start chewing, just constantly chew because it'll still get stuck to your throat. So, right. That's why I weird. was always, that's why I was always apprehensive about yeah. doing that because I've, I watched, um, um, the best food show ever. Yeah. yeah. I watch him sunny <laughs> and oh my God, he eats such crazy things but i did yeah. see him eating like some i think it was live octopus or either live squid and they were still yeah. moving and they yeah. did say you have to be careful no talking none of that because it can get i was like you know what no y'all can keep that yeah i don't it think i'm that hungry those, i was just like yeah let's try it let's work why not right hey. Hey. the moment it didn't like it didn't taste bad didn't taste good it tasted like salt water and just kept <laughs> chewing forever so it was it was weird, but salt water gum, huh? Yeah, right. Exactly. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much like that. Yeah. Oh my god! Last question for you, dear. Mm -hmm. If you can have dinner with anybody that's either living or is no longer with us, that's either famous or not, who would you have dinner with, and why? Well, I have. I would say a few. Okay. Um, from a. Coaching standpoint, uh, like a Joe Lombardi or John Madden would be really cool. Or, or, or oh, what's his? Um, those would be cool. Um, love to sit down with just old family members again. My grand mm -hmm. parents in the past three years i think and i mean we didn't have a great relationship and he had a super severe case of alzheimer's so like he had no idea who i was so i think one last meal with him um with clarity in his brain would be a pretty cool experience or because he never he never knew me as an adult 
Like he mm-hmm. always knew me as a kid. So that would have been fun. Um, but yeah, I would say some really good coaching legends just to get, you know, pick their brains. I, I recently had like a meeting with Karch Karai, who's the head women's national volleyball coach for team USA and just hearing him talk and, and stuff like that was really cool just to be like, Oh, I, I think that way too. And, and just reassuring some things. So it's like just meeting anybody that's unique and, and different and, and positive, like would be really, really fun and really cool. Um, but yeah, definitely like to see some, some old family members that I haven't seen in a while and just chill with them and see them, you know, Hey, look, I'm an adult now and no, no hair and old and stuff like that. So that'd be Stop fun. It. You're not old. <laughs> You know, old enough. So <laughs> old enough. Oh, Tom. Well, it was, it was. I'm grateful that you took the time out with me, spent some of your Sunday with me, Super Bowl Sunday at that. Right. And um, do you have any questions for me before I let you go? No, no, okay. no, none for me. Just super happy to help. And I mean, this takes. This is nothing. Like it takes <laughs> no time for me to hop on and chat, and it's always a good time. So I appreciate it, dear. Before I let you go. I have to give you the last word. So that can be a song, that can be a poem, or that can be just a simple shout out. But right now, Tom, the floor is yours. Shout out Queen City Corsairs, man. Shout out the locker room. You know, shout out uh, Javier Vasquez in Denver. They're doing great things. Drew and Motor City and Dwayne and Colin. Cam and the league, keep doing what you're doing. Um, but yeah, Queen City, we're going to turn it around. It'll it'll happen. Stay Stay true and Stay with us. We're, the, we're getting there. Indeed. Good luck for the rest of the season, guys. Thank you. you guys, too. Keep kicking ass. Hey, we're going to try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Talk to you soon, love. Yeah. Bye. What is up, SFL Nation? And welcome back to my fourth and gold interview one of many i should say um i am joined this valentine's day night with a great friend of mine mr jacob bovet he is the owner of the portland fleet and you know it's a funny story when jacob first entered the league he came on my show and he said that he wanted to be an owner and I that's did. exactly what he became so jacob how are you girl i'm doing good how about yourself i am doing fantastic man i just finished eating the porterhouse steak uh, cooked, it was like medium, a little bit medium well, uh, sweet potatoes and some asparagus. So I'm nice and full right now, bro. I, I had me a uh, fajita burrito from a nice Mexican restaurant and uh, shared a fish bowl strawberry margarita. So, Ooh, uh, yeah. Sounds so good. It was. And, and I got it for me. And then the uh, missus was like, Ooh, that looks good. I'd be like, you should have ordered one. She's like, why? You're not going to drink it. She was right. So, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. We always do that, you know, honey. I, help. Oh, <laughs> um, honey, I don't want any. It's okay. It's okay. And then we right. take half. I, I know. I, I've done. It's it. okay though because I probably didn't need to drink a full fishbowl <laughs> strawberry margarita no. and come on your show. No. So uh, I'm good. <laughs> it's gonna be heavy editing on that one. <laughs> yes, it could be. We'll see. <laughs> oh man, welcome back. I'm really happy to have you back and you know, just kind of shoot the breeze with you, kind of catch up with you. So what's new with you? What's what's new in life? Ooh, um not much to be honest with you. You know, just figuring out the uh, first winter here um at the old lake house, you know, the we we bought last year in in April. So um figuring out that it snows a little bit more here at the lake than what it did in the city. Um, okay. other than that, it's, uh, peaceful, it's quiet, mm. um, it's everything that we thought it was going to be. So that's really what's new here on my end. Um, and, uh, just loving life. Indeed. And to live on a lake house, to have that peace and serenity, that has to be priceless. Living the dream, you know, uh, mm-hmm. we, we went from having, you know, a house with five acres around us to that being developed by somebody or potentially to be developed. And uh, my girlfriend and I said, you know, if we give up this, we want to live on, on the lake or at least by the lake. And, you know, we have a secondary lot and, and there's a open access right across the street. I could, if, 
I could probably throw a baseball and, and hit the water. So, Ooh. Oh, beautiful. Wait, now there's no kind of, um, kind of animals are out there and bears and stuff like I that. I have deer. Okay. Deer is fine. I got Peaceful deer. Animals. I got moose. Okay. I got some bald eagles. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's raccoon, good. you know, some coyotes. Uh, up Wait north where my uh, cornerback Chris Stotch lives, uh, he has the bears and you know, and and the wolves and everything else like that. So I'll pass oh. on that too. Yeah, yeah, Chris. No, bro, we uh, you're gonna have to come down to see us because <laughs> right. ain't messing with no bears, bro. <laughs> yeah, me neither. No nope, pass. But I bet fishing's nice up there too, huh? It is. You know, the uh, lake here has uh, a fish that's called a uh, tiger musky. Mm. um the so your 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 viewers will have to google that it's a tiger muskie uh you can only keep them if it is longer than four feet okay endangered no they just that's the size that they want you to you know harvest out of the lake other than that you throw them back in okay that's that's fair give everybody a fighting chance get that well i'm five foot five so that fish is almost as tall as me oh Oh no! See, Mm-mm. right, four yeah. feet, yeah, four feet four fish, feet. yeah, and they want me to swim in that lake too. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, I'm five two. I'll get eaten right up. Now we, now I'm yeah. good on that. <laughs> but Portland, Portland has been, yeah. you know, you know, your dream since you came into the league. Now, was were were you originally going to go with Portland, or did you have another destination in mind at first, and then Portland would just happen just happen to be where you settled? Well, you know, I I live in Washington. I live about four hours away from from Seattle. Okay. Um, but at that particular time, uh, the uh, Tyrants were a team. Mm-hmm. Um, not knowing what I know now, um, I was looking at Calgary. Um, really? I was. Uh, you know, I, I kind of had a concept already built. Um, and then it was the year that the 49ers and the Chiefs went, which is, you know, season 14 going into season 15. Mm-hmm. And I really drew up the colors because I am a 49ers fan. Um, they they were red and gold. Um, and then I, I showed the concept to somebody. And he's like, dude, that looks like Chiefs all the way. I'm like, oh, I'm going to scrap this. So <laughs> I scrapped that. And then, you know, I, I talk, talking with uh, owner uh, Jeremy Vega, he's like, Jacob, um, think of something that's close to you, you know, like for, you know, something that, that you can market. I was like, well, I go through Portland, you know, a lot, go, go to the ocean and, and I know some people in Port- Portland. And, and so that's what really stuck with me for, through him is that I wanted to be an owner that could represent the city that uh, I choose. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and that's not throwing any shade at, at any of the owners that are, you know, anywhere else besides where they are. But, um, when I was to trying to become an owner, that's what most of the owners told me is that you should pick a city that, that you live by so that you can do some marketing and uh, advertising. Smart. Because mm-hmm. when you're looking for sponsorships, it is very easy for you to go out to your local um, stores and your local mm-hmm. like providers and things like yeah. that to to kind of like hey I'm a, I'm a part of this you know I'm the owner of the um, of an SFL team this is the esports team get a lot of um, you have a lot of fans you know love to kind of market your product all of that yep. good stuff so totally get it totally get it um, good stuff now you guys are sitting at three and two correct we are yeah hey so how do you feel yeah. about that man you know it, it feels great. Um, I can uh, remember another season where we started off really hot, where where we were four and two, um, and then kind of the wheels on or the uh, propeller on the ship per se broke off. Um, mm-hmm. But we were still a young team, and uh, you know, still trying to find our way in in, in the SFL and figuring figuring out playbooks and and uh, everything else like that. But I believe that uh, Mel Davis, who is our offensive coordinator, head coach, and uh, Ezekiel Love. Um, who is the uh, DC is has uh, found so, some secret sauce, we'll say, um, because last year, you know, it, it, a lot of it's not being saying said um, we went six and two towards the uh, latter half of the season. So, um, you know, we ran into a couple of hiccups, you know, uh, week one against a, a tough Minnesota team 
Um, and then uh, week two against a tough uh, Jacksonville team. And, and uh, we're like, no more. And uh, here we are now at three and two, you know, beating a, a, a Lycans team, uh, beating a, a Florida team. It doesn't matter what, what Florida's record is. They are always a tough team to beat. Um, and then to go up into Vancouver and just, you know, have a dogfight with them and, and come out on top is, is an amazing feeling. I bet. I bet. You know, and you kind of segue to one of my questions I was going to ask. Um, why did you select Mel Davis and Ezekiel Love to run, you know, the, the coaching side of things? Well, uh, Mel Davis and I were uh, teammates in Denver. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, him, him and we have a lot of, uh, ideology that we, that, that we think of that we just work really well with each other. Um, I, you know, uh, I was the offensive coordinator, uh, for a couple weeks in season one, a couple weeks in season two, it just kind of, you know, hit and miss, but that's really never been my, uh, what I wanted in this league. Um, mm -hmm. I always wanted to be just the owner. I wanted to treat this like a true uh, football franchise where I'm the owner. I, I take care of the uh, money aspect. I take care of the advertising aspect. And I let uh, people that I trust do what they want to do. Uh, Ezekiel Love came to me and said, hey, man, um, I love what you're doing here. Uh, I believe that you have a uh, organization that I want to be a part of. And uh when you're ready to step down from uh, coaching, which was uh, two seasons ago, um, I, I want to be the man and I'll, I'll prove to you why you made the right decision. And they have. They, they have. very much have. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and Ashley, I will say, um, you know, throughout the seasons, I, I know that Mel Davis has, has been given his lumps of why is he still the head coach of Portland? Why is he still the offensive coordinator of Portland? Um, you can't build these things in a year, right? You know, you, I look at this as, as a true, uh, you know, regular football team. I don't look at it as a sim league. You know, you have to give coaches, you know, ample amount of time to uh, figure out what they need and how they're going to use the weapons that we currently have. Mm -hmm. You have to give them time to grow. I don't think any right. coach that has ever started in this league or it, even in real life, um, started off knowing everything. Right. So for people to, and that's another thing too. I have, I kind of have issues with people being so nitpicky about coaching, especially if you don't sim, if you've never seen a sim, if you have never ran a sim, mm -hmm. I don't think you should really be talking too much because you don't nope. know what goes on and what these people are taking hours out of their life each mm -hmm. day, hours out of their life each week to try to put together for 23 people to be happy. That's a lot of pressure. It, it is. And, you know, when I was the offensive coordinator and head coach for Denver, um, I owned my own business so I could spend a little bit more time. Um, I think I spent close to anywhere between 30 to 40 hours a week um, mm -hmm. just in stimming and and uh, and that type of thing. So, Yeah. Uh, that again, another you have a real job, then you have to go to this job. It's too much, right? <laughs> Especially you know, if you have it, a family. It, it's like I pull my hair out sometimes, and you know, I'm like, I, I, I told JV, I'm like, I don't know how you've done this for for so long. He's like, just steady, just just go steady at it. Don't don't uh, you know dive too much into things. And and uh, the the key words that 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 he's told me that I've passed down. Uh, to Nelson Lozano, who is one of the best GMs. No, no, no offense to you, Ashley. Um, and, I love and Mel Nelson. Davis and mm -hmm. and Zeke is once you stop having fun, that's when we hang the cleats up. Absolutely, absolutely. And we still having fun in Portland. So, and I'm glad. I'm glad. To, I'm glad to hear that. Um, and I wanted to know why do you think people overlook Portland? Is it because maybe the players aren't? out in general chat as much as others um is it because you know maybe it's kind of quiet like what do you think it is that that some people just kind of see you as flying under the radar um i i don't know to be honest with you i, I would like you to 
you know, ask that question to people that come on your show. Sure. Um, I would guess, and this is just a guess, is that people don't know me. Um, mm. I, I'm one of a, I'm, I'm a very quiet uh, majority owner. Uh, you don't see me in Gen Chat. You don't see me on any of the other shows generally. I think the only show I've ever been on is yours and Nelson's. Mm. Um, and uh, I just believe that uh, uh, we just fly under the radar, one, because our players aren't out in Gen Chat. Or, or anything else like that. But I, I would be curious for you to see, you know, for the people that, that you talk to, why they think Portland flies under the radar. And, and, and maybe it's just me that, that, that thinks that or, or and, you know, uh, but uh, I do. I feel that, that the guys uh, don't get recognition li like they should, per se. Um, I feel that uh, Cyrus Jive last season for Rookie of the Year um, got snubbed. Um, I, I kind of kept very quiet on that. I didn't say much about it. The uh, locker room knew about it. Uh, my coaching staff knew about it and Jive knew about it. But uh, I don't know how you leave somebody who broke an SFL record for as many completed passes um, going six and two in the back half of the season and not even get on the ballot for rookie of the year. Mm. Somebody got some explaining to do, huh? Well, you know, and and it, it's how, however the league, um, you know, looks at things and that type of thing that that's on them. But uh, you know, let's try to you know look at the whole spectrum of, of things. And I think last year there was only two. Um, I know that the league didn't put it together. That I know that uh, I believe it was some owners that that put it together really quick because the league was a little behind. So I get that, you know, and, and everything else like that. But uh, you know, it, it is what it is, and, and Jive is proving um, to the uh, league that he is uh, an elite quarterback. Mm. Indeed. And I'll make sure that I, I ask, especially some of the owners and some of the content creators that I do have on the show, um, what their thoughts are and, mm -hmm. and why, you know, you guys tend to fly under the radar when you do so well. Um, but the moment you are not doing so well, then... You make the front page, so <laughs> and, and and you know, Ashley, I'm I'm a okay flying under the radar. I'm a okay mm -hmm. not being uh, in the top sixteen in in the power polls. Um, I, I I think in uh, the five season that Portland has been, I don't think we've ever been a higher than fifteen, um, which is fine by me. Um, and you know, we just have to prove it on the field. Uh, one game at a time, one one foot in in front of the other, other, and um, earn that respect fr from the league. Indeed, indeed. But then again, it's not necessarily a bad thing to fly under the radar because people don't know what to expect because Correct. you're exactly. overlooked. So, yep, I'll, I will take that any day of the week. <laughs> Never underestimate your opponent because that's when they right. come back and bite you. I get it. You know, and, and I'm kind of saying a statement here, you know, with my banner behind me, you know, the uh, no fly zone banner, um, mm -hmm. you know, top one, one of the top defenses in the league. Um, and, and we proved it uh, this last week versus Denver versus uh, uh, Vancouver. Now, you mentioned Denver. How was that conversation when you had to tell JV that? Hey, I'm getting my own team and Mel's coming with me. Like, how did that go? Um, well, JV was was very supportive. Um Good. when he talked to me, kind of interviewed me for being the uh, offensive coordinator head coach, I told him my my dream. I told him um I still have the conversation that I had with uh Yogi Barr, um, who is now an owner uh down mm -hmm. in Alamo City. Um, we, we both had the same aspirations when, when we first joined. Um, and, uh, I told him like, I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know when, when expansion is going to happen, but when it does, I'm going to put my name in the hat. And he's like, Jacob, you got a lot to learn. I'm like, I get it, but I'm learning from one of the best. And, uh, he's like, well, okay. You're, you're tooting the horn a little early. I'm like, well, you know. I, you won a championship and you're giving it away to me. So I'm, I'm going to learn everything I can from you. And so, uh, he actually gave me a list of teams or not teams, but cities that he felt would be a good bid. 
Yeah. Um, and, and in there was Portland and I was like, Ooh, this is, this is okay. And Calgary was in there and, and, uh, and everything else like that. And, and he's like, you know, if, if this is what you really want to do, I will support you 1000% and I will help you, um, you know, with whatever I need. And he's like, just get out there in front of the owners you know, bug them like, like a little brother bugs a baby sister or, or a big sister. <laughs> uh, not, not calling any of the owners, you know, sisters by any means, but, yes. uh, but uh, technically you know. I, I am a sister. So you could, uh, okay. All right. There you go. Um, <laughs> and, and so that's what I did. And, and I really feel that my breakthrough was when I beat Vancouver up in Vancouver and, and the video that my girlfriend was, you know, that, you know, unedited, unfiltered video of, of, of when we won. And, and uh, I think that's what really helped me with the uh, owners is the uh, emotions that I have for a simulated team and game. But I think in a way, when people get out and find their own and they can be able to attach their, their name to something that is truly theirs, I think it means a lot more. Um, I know Eddie showed, shared a story with you know, loving to be on Houston, but wanted to make that name for himself. You know, yep. that's why he wanted his own team. Um, Jay Hayden, the same thing. You know, he he loved being an Arizona Scorpion, but he definitely wanted to branch out and and be a head coach. And I believe he eventually wants to become an owner, if I'm not mistaken. So right. I get that. You do have to learn from the best in order to do your best when you're when you have those opportunities to become mm -hmm. more. You know, so I get that. And that's and, good. You know, for, as for, for Mel Davis, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't privy to the information that Mel told, told JV. So I, okay. I, I don't want, will want to speak for, for that by any means, okay. but uh, I, I'm sure, you know, um, you know, everything w was done right between those two. And, and uh, you know, we will always be, you know, night wings, you know, at first, um, but we definitely bleed uh, blue and orange. Hey, I understand. So your next opponent is going to be the Indianapolis Ramblers who are, yeah. um, you know, they're, they're having one of those seasons, you know, mm -hmm. um, what do you expect from them and how do you, how do you think? Cause I know you, you probably, you probably know, but you definitely don't want to say, but how <laughs> do you think you should prepare for Indianapolis? Uh, just like we did for Vancouver. Yeah. You know, uh, you treat every game as if you're uh, playing the championship. Mm -hmm. um, you play every game like it's the last. Um, and that's how, how my coaching staff um, goes into every single game. And I know it's cliche, but, uh, you know, every sing single team is a championship team. It doesn't matter if they're 0-5. It doesn't matter what their record is. Is You have to go into this thinking that you're playing for the championship and or playing to get to the championship. You lose, you're out. Indeed. So since you actually have had offensive coordinator experience, this may be a little bit of an unfair question, but I'm going to ask anyway. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite side of the ball? Will it be offense? Would it be defense? Or could it be special teams? I love defense. Okay. Why? Um, it's just I want to stop those those high flying players. I want to stop the Robert Redfords. I want to stop the uh, Christian Browns. I want to stop the Brett Killians. Um, I definitely want to stop. Um, I wish he was still playing a Jared McChesney. I know that name hasn't yeah. been said in a long time, but uh, I would give my right arm for a chance to play a Jared McChesney, uh, a Miller, you know, that, that Zach Sandlin. Oh my God. and Sandlin. Um, I would, I would love to just suit up against them and, and play. And, and uh, it, it would be just amazing, you know, um, Jared McChesney is, is a phenomenal running back and, mm. and, and he was a power back, but you know, who reminds me of a Jared McChesney is my Ezekiel love Ezekiel love yeah. runs just like Jared McChesney, but as a finesse back. Mm -hmm. And that's special. Very that's special. special. 
I mean, Jared was dragging people, like literally dragging yeah. three, four people. <laughs> Well, he, he would when JV coached him, but when he when I coached him, it was like a, a gnat hit him and, and he'd fall over. I, I don't understand that. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Were you? Did you ever um, coach an SFL M team? Never did. Never did. Would you yeah. have liked to? Yeah. I still would, you know, actually be, being an owner, um, I, I would like to play in, in the SFLM, not play, but, you know, coach and and uh, help the SFL teams and, 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 and get them, you know, figuring out what philosophies they want. Do they want to be a run and gun kind of team? Do they want to be a West Coast team? Are they solely, you know, the... Uh, Mavericks in the league where, where they're just airing it out or do they want to be more of like a Portland team and and a true West Coast offense where, where we're going to, you know, run and then pass and then run some more and lull you to sleep and then throw it over the top. You know, I, I believe that's kind of what, what I would like to do is is uh, um, help in the, the minors in the coaching aspect of, of how to build playbooks and, and uh, not giving away Portland secrets by any means, but mm -hmm. I believe that, that that you can help the uh, minor leaguers in in that aspect. Mm. Good stuff, Jacob. Good stuff. And since you know it is Valentine's Day, I'm not going to hold you here too long. But I do have just a few, just maybe like two more questions for you, two or three. Okay. Sure. So one of them is, what would the title of your auto autobiography be? Humble but hungry. Ah, I like it. Right off the top. Um, I, I actually have, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, I could send you a picture, but I yes. actually wear one. I actually wear a, a bracelet. Um, you can't, but it says on it, humble, but hungry. I wear it. Um, I've had it on for about five years now. So it's just always been, been, been my motto is, is I'm humble, but don't get it twisted. I'm definitely hungry. Okay, man. I like that. That's that's actually a good one. And I like how you just came up with it like you already knew. That was <laughs> <laughs> if you could have a meal with anyone that's famous or not, that is living or not living with us anymore, who would it be and why? Ooh. One person? It could be two. Um all 23 of my Portland fleet players. Wow. I think you're the first person I've ever said that. Why? Every single one of them. I, I would love to to sit down, break bread with them, and and uh, just have a co conversation with, with all 23 of my players. All together, you know, in one room, you know, and, and you know, it, it's nice in, in our locker room where it's texting and, or in our voice chats, but uh, just to break bread with uh, every one of my players. Awesome. That's a good answer. I like that. And I know they'll be happy to hear that too. <laughs> yes. Um, looking back when you were younger, what was a silly fear that you had that you no longer have? Wow. <sighs> no, I still have that one. I hate snakes. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> no snakes. Check. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, I think when, when I was younger, um, I was afraid of death. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the the older that I am, right? I'm not that old. Let's let's you know, I'm 44. So. Um, okay. I, I, I think I've come to realization that, you know, one day I'm not going to be here. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're younger, you're afraid of it. You know, you're like, Man, I got so long to live. And, and, uh, you know, now that, you know, I, I'm older, I, I live every day, like, if it's my last, and, and, and that could be it right there. And a little insight, you know, it's, it's a little deep here, but you know, it, it's true. 
Very, very much so. That's okay to get deep on my show. I think that's mm -hmm. what makes everyone's shows different. You know, if you want different vibes, you turn into different shows. And I, I love being able to ask these questions and get these answers because it is an insight to not only the person, but to the members that make up our wonderful community. And people can understand when they watch shows like these, why people gravitate to the SFL. Even if they don't play, they still stay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is one of the reasons why. So yeah. great conversation. You know, I've had uh, probably five people um, on my Facebook friends list say, I need to learn more about this SFL that you keep posting about. And, and uh, I send them the link and said, hey, check out this, you know, phenomenal, um, you know, community that I'm part of. Check out the fleet games. Of course, I'm going to promote me. That's um, right. I think, you know, right. <laughs> um, and uh, I think there was like five of them that, that, that joined the server just in, in the last month. And, and uh, I tell them, hey, you know, I'm, I, I can't promise anything. Just uh, join the server, have fun and, and meet a bunch of amazing people and be careful because you're going to start watching this more than the NFL. And I, when I tell you, I'm going to let you go in a second. When I tell you, when I watch the Super Bowl, it didn't hit me the same as it normally would when, before I found the SFL. Now right. I'm just like, okay, all right. I don't, I don't, I don't like these announcers. Like, can we get Cam and somebody else to do this? Cause right. I'm like, yeah. I'm bored. I'm, like, I'm bored. Where's the Rick meter? Right. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, uh, you know, a buddy of mine, we were doing something. I'm like, hi, ah, the Rick meter is full. You know, it, whatever we were doing, it's, uh, you know, oh, the Rick meter's <laughs> halfway or it's full this way. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I think the NFL should, should have a, a Rick meter or a Madden, Madden meter. meter. Madden meter or, or something like that. That, that, <laughs> that would be, I would watch those games. And, and I find myself watching um those games just because of the rick meter and yeah. i love it when they call portland games yes because it's uh you know it, it's just the rick meter and i tune into the rick meter I, i'm a fan he he needs a shirt he needs some sort of shirt you know that that, that has the rick meter either full or half or or wherever he deems it to be or that's right you know um you could even you know market it for teams if it's a full foregoing another team, you, you could have a, a logo or of, of the team with the arms holding it back, trying not to get it to go full or, <laughs> you know, that type of thing. So just having fun with it. Hey, I know maybe somebody will, you know, take that idea and actually make it. I'll tell you what, if the NFL does do something like a Madden meter, uh, we need to get paid. We I came up with yep. that. You got yes, it. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yes please. So, Ashley, I, I, I yeah. want to say happy birthday, not to you. But uh, to the state of Arizona, I don't know if you knew that, but Arizona's birthday is on Valentine's Day every year. So uh, happy birthday. Oh, well, I'm glad I came at a good time. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I would have known that, I would have bought a cake, you know. <laughs> right. See, so maybe you should tell Eddie, you know, he needs to wish Arizona a happy birthday because he loves them. Right. Arizona, Definitely. I love y'all. So, you know, it's their birthday, Eddie, and, and you can say happy <laughs> birthday. So. I don't know how much love he had. I'm kidding, Eddie. I'll we'll be playing with you. <laughs> but that's a good fact, though. That's a good fact. I'm all, it is. I will, I will, happy birthday, Arizona. You know? and, and it was on Twitter. <laughs> I can't remember where I saw it on Twitter, but it was on Twitter. And I, I almost tweeted it and, and, and tagged Arizona, you know, the Scorpions. But I was like, nope. Don't be afraid to tag us. We should, you know, you know I'll like, tag no, people all the time. I'm going to talk with Ashley tonight. And then I'm going to, you know, do my jabs a little bit. And here we are. <laughs> Awesome. This was fun. Always a great time talking to you, Jacob. I always have a good time with you, brother. Yes. One more thing. Do you have any questions for me before I let you go? No, I don't. Okay. Um, okay. You know, I asked, you know, the uh, one question about, about your guitar behind you. And yes. you answered that for me. Um, mm -hmm. And for those that said, didn't get the answer, I mean, right. I played a bass line on it. I'm not, you know with the the melodies yet but we're we're getting there slowly i would like to see an ashley jackson playing the guitar episode actually i will send you a link oh okay all right 
Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. All right. And then, yeah, just it, it's always fun coming on here, Ashley. Um, you're one of the exclusive shows that I come on. So, uh, you know, you have the uh, uh, Portland owners, uh, ex- you know, exclusivity um, <laughs> for right now. But uh, there, there was one person that I didn't get to shout out a little bit here. Um, sure. You know, on your show, uh, besides all 23 players on the team, I guess I'm one of them. So 22 players um, is my two GMs, um, Nelson Lozano, who is my GM, uh, Ben Warner, uh, who is my assistant GM. They are truly the glue that uh, keeps this team together. Um, they bust their butts, you know, uh, 365 days out of the year. Um, asking the team, you know, what we can do better, how we're doing. And then, you know, just out there talking to people in general about the league and, and about Portland. Um, so I I, I want to thank those two from the bottom of my heart um, because honestly, without Nelson and Ben, um, I don't know where we would be, you know, because they, they are truly the glue that that holds the, uh, the ship together or the bolts, nuts and bolts that hold the ship together. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, Nelson's the uh, nuts and bolts of, 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 you know, my GMs are the nuts and bolts of, of what what keeps the uh, ship together. And uh, I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart. And, you know, may, maybe one year, you know, the 23 of us can uh, get together, like I said, and and uh, break bread and, and uh, have a fleet convention. You know what? And that would be lovely. The question is, who's going to pick up that tab? <laughs> I'll send the bill to Cam. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff, Jacob. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. And please come back on, bring some more guys whenever you want to. Even if y'all want to make it a team podcast, you know, kind of introduce um a group of your guys to the league, things like that. I would love to have all of you on. As many as I can have a hundred people on here, so. All right. I got you. <laughs> Maybe we will do uh, the hogs in the middle for the uh, three offensive line. Oh, okay. That sounds good to me. You let me know when, and I'll make it happen for us, okay? All right. Thank you so much, Ashley, and happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, dear. See You're you soon. Good bye. luck out there. Thank you. You too. Bye. Feel great. I've been woke, son. Why you deal hate? Yeah, soak up the sun at a real rate. Yeah, I've been grown up, most Ian's at day. Hey, figure eight, my music on last to infinity, no debate. What is up, SFL Nation? And we are back with my fourth and gold interview featuring two good friends of mine that I haven't seen in a long time. I have Mr. Axel Raven. He is the head coach and owner of the Minnesota Legends. Fresh off a win. How are you? Doing good. I want to do a clarification, not head coach. Uh, not this season. Uh, that is Chris Komasek. I'm the DC this year, this season. I apologize. Handed off the reins. Wanted to make sure he gets the dues. So <laughs> there you go, Chris. I'm sorry, man. I wasn't trying <laughs> to take nothing from you. I promise. <laughs> and another good friend of mine, Mr. Yogi Bar. He is one of the owners. One of like toes. Go to toes. <laughs> At the top of the Alamo City Artillery. How are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing wonderful. It's good to have both of you back. I'm, you know, like I said, as I was telling you guys off camera, it's been a while and, you know, good friends, good people. Just want to make, just kind of catch up with you, see what's going on. Sounds good. All right. So, start with you first, Yogi. What's new? What's new in real life? What, what has happened? You know, since the last time we've talked. Oh my, a lot. Got a puppy now. Hey, what kind? Uh, she's a she's a she's a poo. She's a Newfie poo, a Newfoundland and a poodle. So she's gonna be a big girl. Oh, um, I think. <laughs> oh, she's hiding. I can't get her now. <laughs> Sorry. She's uh, seven months old. So she's a handful. Bad. Not bad. I've uh, just bought a second vacation house at the river here at the chesapeake bay uh it's so no it's a lot of elbow grease oh. low cost a lot of work but mm. it's gonna be well worth it oh man when you take pictures 
Oh yeah. Send them to me and then send me after. I love to see the before and after. I got them as I'm going. I got pictures, lots of them. <laughs> love it. So uh, uh, we're working on Alamo City. We spent a lot of time rebranding this off season. Uh, I've had to fill a few more holes this year. We've done that admirably. We're trying to grow and bring more people in and roles mm -hmm. so that we can train future owners probably in the SFL. Okay. Uh, now we're knee deep in the getting ready for the season 21 also with all the changes that are coming about. We're all in the book studying everything we can. Indeed. Indeed. Um, Bo mentioned that it's like five of you that are actually running sims and things of that nature you know kudos to all of you for the efforts that you put in each see each week you know to help it's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that people don't know about it's a lot d axel yeah. what's going on with you brother hey yeah it's, i feel like it's been since before you know bj and i got the team i want to say even um so yeah i mean that it's been you know, we're now uh, season two of of the Minnesota Legend, and things are going uh, pretty good this season so far. And um, yeah, you know, in real life, you know, uh, it's it's been a little bit of up and down of of for the winter here. Um, let's see, I, I hurt my back and was sort of out of commission for about a month in December, pretty much. So, um, but thankfully, uh, the week between christmas and new year's started coming back um uh so and i'm back to 100 percent, which is great but i was like sleeping reclined on the the couch for like three weeks um you know muster relaxants and and that kind of stuff just you know hobbling along um as much as i could but um so i'm, I'm glad that's that's done with um but really you know life has been uh you know nothing too too traumatic at all you know the kids are growing older and and my wife and i are doing well so um yeah no, nothing nothing bad to report on so all good good i was hoping not hoping i have you know <laughs> yeah everything goes in the positive directions for everybody you know and um i think i remember talking to you around december when you hurt your back at first and you had mentioned that yeah um back issues are no joke that's that's your your core of everything so yeah i'm glad you I, I was i was talking with like our dming with like swole as well and then he was giving me like these are some great exercises to do um you know yeah. just a lot of great support which is great um and thankfully i have a job that i can work from home at so it didn't really impact you know uh, all that stuff and we were prepping for season 20 anyways and so it just you know sitting down i was fine it was a standing up or transitioning between places that was tough but uh, made it through and and I am you know got a membership at a gym trying to keep my core strong and all that kind of stuff pre preemptively so I love it yeah I love it hey that's that's something that we got to do you know when you hit that 30 and over <laughs> you know, you, oh my god 40 and over for me yeah it's, <laughs> it's uh yeah we're not getting any younger so oh <laughs> nice <laughs> love it love it now gentlemen both of you are owners and yes. I remember talking to you guys when you first came into the league and having that aspiration of wanting to to do more for your team, for the league, and you know, get your names out there and things of like that. And you and you have. So what is your favorite aspect of owner being an owner and being coaching, uh being a coach or working as a coach or helping your coaches? I'll let Yogi go first. <laughs> oh, I was getting ready to say I was gonna let Axel go first. Uh, I'm thinking right now. I'm trying. Yeah, to that's what I was trying to do. Uh, favorite aspect. It's just the probably the building of the locker room, the yeah. interacting with the people on a day to day basis. Um, you know, we're we're on a two game losing streak, trying to stay keep everybody upbeat. It's a long season. Uh, we're at two and three. We're not happy to be there, but it is what it is. And we've got to go from there. So I, I would say it's, it's the working with the people on a day-to-day -day basis was, is my favorite part. Mm -hmm. Love it. And, and for me, like I was thinking like it, it's kind of, I mean, very similar to what Yogi was talking about. I think just making an atmosphere that uh, 
that not only I'm proud of, but every single member of the 23 other people or 22 other people or whatever um, can say, I'm proud of this organization. Um, you know, that's, it's, it's no longer about us as individuals. It's, it's us as a team and um, really wanting to, you know, it's something bigger than ourselves. So it's, it's, it's really cathartic and rewarding to be able to like put effort into this and see, see things grow and people be excited um, and I know Yogi mentioned this too, the idea of like putting people into positions where they're going to grow and thrive uh, and just seeing them do that. Like, you know, one example is Johnny Reno for our, who's our uh, director of, of uh, communication um, and seeing him thrive over the last season and a half or so doing that. And like, he's getting a lot of joy out of it and he's rocking it. And it's like, yes, you know, just needs to like be given that opportunity and see them step into it and flourish is great. Indeed. And congratulations respectfully on both of you, you know, to both of you um, on on the work you've done. And you both have made a positive impact on the community in various ways, in your own ways. Um, but it's it's refreshing to see you guys grow from just joining bright eyed and bushy tailed to now being seasoned, being comfortable and confident in, in the positions that you're in. So Congratulations and kudos goes out to both of you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Now, gentlemen, the the respective destinations that your teams are in currently, is that where you wanted them originally? Or did you have other destinations in mind, but you kind of just decided at the, you know, that Alamo City is where this is going to be and that Minnesota is where we're going to have it? Okay, I'm trying to put context into your question. You talking about when I first got into the league and getting going to which teams or how you, we picked Alamo City? How you picked Alamo City out of all the destinations? Well, we wanted to stay in Texas. We wanted to stay in the mm -hmm. South Division. So mm -hmm. we looked around Texas and we looked at Austin and we looked at some of the bigger cities. And it just, with our military presence, mm -hmm. the Alamo just kind of jumped out at us. And we went with that. We rolled with that. And we we spent four or five hours a night going over ideas, color schemes, uh, what our what our emblems were gonna be, and it just kind of evolved as as we worked through it. It just boom, next thing you know, we had it. It was the Alamo City artillery. It's just how it happened. It was um a group effort. Gotcha. It rolls off the tongue really well, too. Yeah. <laughs> nice liberation. Well, it Listen. puts us at the top when you go to look at teams. <laughs> we're, the, we're alphabetical. We're tops. Ahead of Arizona, I believe. You know what? The, you don't want to go there with me, Yogi. <laughs> uh, you, I always go there with you. Why would it be any different? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we the top somewhere else then. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm leaving okay. that one alone. I'm leaving that one alone. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so Minnesota, I'm, I, I grew up, I was born and raised, uh, grew up in, um, in Winnes Wisconsin on the border with Minis uh, Minnesota. So Minnesota is like a second home, even though I now live here for 20 plus odd years. Um, so, I'll, you know, split my time between both in my 42 years of life. Um, but I currently live in Minnesota and, and, you know, I've called this place home and, and that's where I was, um, you know, wanting to have a team, a hometown team. That's why I originally went to Sioux Falls because that was as close of hometown as I could get for in Minnesota. Um, and then BJ, you know, connecting with him and and his uh, connection with with Minnesota. And actually, he has, I think it's his nephew is going to high school here in Elk River, where I am actually living um, and stuff. And so it it felt, you know, it's uh, for sure wanted it in the Midwest. Um, you know, I know that, uh, Jack Brown and BJ had put together like a Detroit blaze, I think, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, organization, uh, proposal before, um, but you know, I, it just fits and that's where, you know, um, I, I, I couldn't think of another better place. So, okay. yeah. What do you want the Minnesota legends and the Alamo city artillery to be best known for? Um, and that could be from a team aspect that can be from the performances on the field. 
what what do you want when people think of Alamo City or when they think of Minnesota? What do you want them to think of first? Bring um, in the boom. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, okay. we, it's uh, it's more that um, we put a good product on the field. We have good people in the locker room, and and if we have those two things, we've won right off the bat. In, in our, all of our opinions. Okay. I'm for Minnesota. I, I think, you know, and again, this isn't necessarily the, the team, but my perspective on it, um, you know, I, I think able to execute on the field really well and respectful outside of the game. Um, you know, I, I like that. the They've been saying that we've been playing the Midwest type of football, sort of hard-nosed, um, kind of thing, great for the central division kind of thing. And that's made me like, wow, that, you know, it's not like we're doing that intentionally, but it's, it's interesting that the product, the, the, the output of what we've been doing has been resulting in that kind of gameplay, um, which feels, you know, right for us and for our, our identity and things. Um, and yeah, I think it's just, you know, of, of hold ourselves, we're able to be fun uh you know we can have uh some nice uh rivalries with like we have with with uh indy um but we can also be respectful as well that we we know where that line is and we're we're willing to to play up until that line but yeah okay sounds good um How do you block out the naysayers and the negative individuals that sometimes you run across? Um, not the bad, not the friendly rivalry that's like you guys, you and Chad have, not that, but mm -hmm. like the other stuff, like when you are trying to put together, you know, the best, you know, coaching plan or the best plan for your side of the ball. Um, and then you have somebody say, oh, well, the, the defense, their defense ain't cr it's crap or, you know, doesn't matter what they do. They're always going to be crap. How do you block that out and still continue to do what you need to do and focus on being owners um, and even helping out with coaching as well? All right. All right. Um, let's see. So for me, I, I, it's hard for me to separate like myself and, and, uh, and things outside of like the performance that we play on the field or the game plan and things. It feels like it's, it's cause I, I'm myself in the, the uh, collaborators, the coaching staff that we have, you know, we're all putting our, our blood, sweat and tears, our hard work, our, our hours of work that we're putting in um, where we can spend be spending with our time with our family and, and other things, right. Uh, we're putting that into this and, you know, no matter what happens on the field, no matter the result, as long as we're trying our best, I think that uh, we're not like giving in, we're not giving up, we're, we're putting forth our, our best foot, our best effort is, is huge, but it's also a, a mental and sort of emotional exercise to sort of separate or compartmentalize, you know, sometimes the result, the big L that you might've suffered versus the amount of effort, um, you know, being put in ultimately just coming to the conclusion that really, you know, we did our best. We did what we thought was was going to be the best thing for us, and sometimes it doesn't work out. Um, and you know, we know that APF chain has has things we can game plan and perfect what our game plan is to what we're guessing the the opponent is going to do, but we have no idea what changes they're going to make or what APF is going to throw at us as well. Um, and so it's 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 always a gamble, and there's no certainty. And sometimes it literally is like a roll of the dice, and. Um, you can't get mad at that. It, you know, you get bombed. Sometimes you might need to give me a 24 hour cooling off period so that I don't say anything stupid kind of thing. Um, and, and, you know, I've, I've gone to like BJ and, or BJ's talked to me like, Hey, you know, it's all right. And, and, you know, we're there for each other. And I think the team is there as well for us um, to lift ourselves up. So, yeah. Okay. Yogi. We go with the us 23 mantra. It's, as long as we've put in an effort that our locker room is, is proud of, mm -hmm. it's a simulation game. If, if these naysayers can tell me how to get plays called that you've got in your playbook that never get called, then they're better than us because I don't know how to do it. <laughs> we put in play after play after play and you don't see it. There's nothing you can do about that. You could throw your playbook together. You put it in there. And like Axel said, you guess what they're going to do. 
And if it's something otherwise, it's nothing you can do. As long as we're happy with the work that we're putting in and the effort that we're putting in, the rest is going to take care of itself. You know, we'll, we'll win and lose together as a team. And we always have. How many hours per week would you say that you guys spend on SFL related? Us or the team? You specifically. Me specifically? I, I, right now, I'm doing a lot of research on 2K23. Ooh. So I'm not doing as much as far as the game planning and the setting the plays up. We've got the coaching staff and the scouts heavily involved with that. Mm-hmm. So I'm putting in probably 10, 12 hours a week doing all the research I can on APF and 2K23. Okay. Because we still got to run this season. So anything I can learn that will help us this season, I'm still in there learning what I can on APF too. Gotcha. That's awesome. Yeah, Definitely. for me, um, doing the defensive coaching and things and simming and helping to support our offense as well because they go hand in hand so much anyways without a bad with a bad defense your offense struggles and vice versa and so you know we're working together but for me personally it's between six to ten hours a day and again that's not like me fully sitting down all the time but you know sims take a while to to run luckily um i've been able to get three sims running at a time which saves a heck of a lot of time a lot more data coming in um so you know but yeah we're you know Oh, a sim stops. Let me take a look at the results and and analyze that and make some tweaks and changes. Set, start up another one, and then I can go back to work and and do things because I again work at home, so it makes it a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got my work computer over here. I've got my my APF emulator over here, and I can you know juggle that in between throughout the day. But um, yeah, it's it's a solid handful of hours every single day from when we play Saturday or Sunday and until we turn in the playbook on Thursday and then maybe we start scouting, you know, come Friday and Saturday. Um, so it's, it's, it's hard to, and I, I even DM'd you, you know, like, Hey, we, we're on a buy now. So yeah. maybe I should take a day or two break, but, uh, uh, yeah. but it's hard to step away when you're, we're in the habit, you know, the, the season starts and you just go, go, go for 14 plus weeks. So it's, um, it's hard to, you know, if you set it down for too long, you, you lose your cadence or you, your habit or, or uh, pattern. Mm. good stuff last sfl kind of related question because i'm going to move on to a couple of uh new personal questions um well, name a team that's on your schedule currently that you haven't played yet that you're looking forward to and why you're looking at me ah uh... <laughs> well in the second half of the season we get to play houston twice I'm looking forward to that. We've never played them twice. Okay. Uh, we've usually matched up with uh, uh, Mexico City twice. But so okay. this is the first time in my time with Lone Star slash Alamo City. We've played them twice. Um, looking forward to it to see where we stand with them. You know, they've they've found ways to beat us in the past. We get two chances this year. I'd like to make the most of it. I'm not going to promise anything, but I would like to make the most of it. There you go. Love it. Love it. Uh, for me, uh, it's, I don't I hope this isn't, doesn't sound weird or anything. Um, I, I'm excited to play um, Seattle. We, we haven't played them. Uh, both expansion teams. I know Ethan really well. Uh, we coached against each other in the minor leagues. Um, I really like Doug. I know T to Queen and, you know, met, met them at the, the con- convention. convention. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I'm just excited. I, I feel like the I have a really good connection with them and that team. Um, so it's going to be a, a lot of fun um, seeing, you know, what kind of havoc we can wreak on the on the field um, against them. But um, I, I'm excited about that. That one I think is the one that I'm looking forward to. Again, less about like you know worry or or you know never beating them or anything like that. But it, it, I think it's just uh, two friends coming together and, and battling it out. So. Okay. Why do you stay? Why do you stay a member of the SFL? All the things that happen, all of the times you get frustrated, all the times you like, am I really, you know, spending all this time doing all of this work and all this effort? Why stay? I'm a competitor at art. I'll never walk away from something I still think I can compete at. 
Uh, for me, it's it's the camaraderie and almost, I mean, I almost feel it's like a family, like an extended family. Like it's, you know, they're, they're people that I talk to every single day um, on here, whether they're on the team or, or not. And then meeting new people and seeing, you know, the, the influx come in is, is great, uh, you know, simple interaction, which again, like, because I work at home, I don't have a lot of that. So it's, it's great to have uh, a lot of that interaction. Mm -hmm. I can imagine, especially like this, this is all I see. I need people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no? Okay. Fun questions. What is something that you think is totally overrated? And that could be anything. Paying taxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to, I'll take that answer too. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Um, say your favorite movie quote, name the movie and what's your favorite movie quote from it? And let us hear it. I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> what movie Wyatt Earp, Tombstone. <laughs> Tombstone. That was uh, Doc Holliday, not Wyatt Earp, in Tombstone. Okay, great movie. <laughs> uh, for me, it is um, remind me to thank John for a lovely weekend um, from uh, Jurassic Park when Malcolm Ian Malcolm was tossed into the building after the T Rex went through. <laughs> um, a little quip from him. Uh, one of my favorite movies. Okay. Name a game show that you think you could really win. You go on it tomorrow. I could win it. Take home the prize. Jeopardy. Oh, okay. Go Yogi. Yes. Um, let's see. I feel like there was there was one way back. I don't know if it was like Bob Eubanks or someone was hosting it, like the couples game or something like that, where they're like three sets. No of Really, yes, so where they're asking questions, like <laughs> one goes out of the room and they ask the other questions. They've, I think, my wife and I, I think we'd we'd kill it at that. Okay. If you had to have one song playing in the background, like as a theme song, every time you walk down the street, what would it be? Axel's <laughs> turn. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I mean, it's, I've narrowed it down from a couple, but, um, I don't know the one that, that comes to my brain right now that I, I could see being like a power song, um, giving me a little extra swagger and, and things walking down, uh, is, uh, run the jewels legend has it. Is it just a fun song? Okay. Um, yeah. Run the jewels legends hat by legend have it. Uh, run the jewels is the, the group. And okay. The song is called legend has it. Okay, cool. I'm old school, so I'm going super tramp, even in the quietest moments. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. What is one pe what is the worst piece of advice that you have ever been given? And that could be life related, that could be SFL related, however you want to answer that. Mm. Speak your mind. <laughs> it's gotten me in trouble more times than once. <laughs> yes. Especially with the opposite sex. <laughs> we're, we're, we're meant to nod. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Sometimes it's just safer to nod, man. Just okay, honey, you got it. <laughs> I, I yes, can't give any for myself. Nothing's coming to mind. Okay. Um two more questions what was something that you were scared of when you were younger that you're no longer afraid of no go really ahead. <laughs> really yeah yeah you're gonna humiliate me like that I, only I, thing i have <laughs> ever been scared of and my mom would tell you when i was a little kid this boy ain't afraid of the devil himself she Ooh. was right one thing my mom collected porcelain frogs. Okay. They were all over the house. Frog figurines. I used to have nightmares. I'd see a frog outside and I'd jump like it was a snake. Wow. Those so I, me and a buddy changed his oil in his car uh -huh. and he set the pan of oil by his door to the apartment. And uh -huh. the next night I came by and there was a frog in the oil. 
I took the frog in. I rescued him. That frog was there every single night catching bugs. And I got over the fear of frogs. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, yes frogs. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was good. <laughs> Axel, what about you, dear? Um, you know, I was, I'll say something. I uh, being myself, I was, I was, you know, trying to, you know, as a kid, as a teen, trying to be someone, you know, that people would would like, and um, I was because I was afraid to show who I was, and uh, for being rejected or judged or uh, that kind of thing, and um, had a lot of low self self esteem, insecurities, and things, and you know, I think in the last ten years, um, come out of my shell a lot more, and. Uh, I'm not as afraid, not as afraid to, to be myself. So, I mean, I'm on here now, talking to you guys right now. True. So, yeah. True. Cause I remember the very first time you were on the show, you were nervous, Yeah. you know, and I told you, man, it's just like talking to a good friend. Like we're just having a beer and having a nice <laughs> conversation. So, and look at you, you've been out there, you've been running your own streams and you've been doing a whole bunch of stuff now. So it's good stuff, man. Um, who's the most famous person that you've ever met? And tell us the story of how you met him. Big Bird. You you from met Sesame Big Street. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I w- I was Bert one time, the tall one with the yellow head. Yes. Yes, yes. I-, I grew up down the street from Sesame Street, the the broadcasting studios and everything Wow! and they used to hold a telethon and one night i was working at the telethon they said would you be bert for us i said if i get to meet big bird yeah and so i wore that awful plastic smelling head so i could meet big bird i was about 15 years old it was just like i've met big bird Bird." i love it (laughs) love it axel (laughs) <laughs> uh, for me, uh, it is one of my favorite singers, Mike Doty, who was a lead singer for Soul Coughing. Okay. Um, he was doing a solo show, and I was able to go meet him afterwards and get him to sign a CD and to get my picture taken with him and stuff. Fantastic. See, I love this. I love questions like this because you get a chance to know more about you as you know an individual. You know, But my very, very last question is if you can have dinner with anyone that's famous or not or that's living with us or not who would you have dinner with and why yeah that's i know you take your time it's all right <laughs> i'll go first I'll, um so i'm a big history nerd and i would choose hannibal barca who was the carthaginian general that that was part of the punic the second punic wars attack from carthage attacking uh rome coming up through the alps and down um anyways i'd love to to meet him and talk with him and you know find out more his stories about uh all that kind of stuff wow i I actually remember those what we learned about hannibal nobody to play with (laughs) good one i'm a history nerd too so (laughs) My answer is going to be because of my Scottish heritage. I'd like to have met William Wallace and had dinner with William Wallace and ask him how he inspired so few to do so much. Beautiful. Oh gosh. See, I look at it. I love this. I love this. I love coming together with you guys and showcasing our community, the individuals that make the community what it is. And this is the reason why we stay. If you ever have any qual- anybody it. interested, tell them to watch these shows. This is why we stay. So, exactly. But before I let you guys go, because it is getting kind of late, have do you have any questions for me? What number show is this? This is two fifty five. I knew you would know. So two fifty five. I better know. I want to ask you, I was thinking about it earlier today uh, sure. in preparation for this too, is the, you've sort of moved recently. Where are you living now? Is it, I can't remember if it was like Arizona, Atlanta, somewhere else. I'm not sure which one. You had it right. Ariz- I'm in Arizona now. I actually okay. moved from Georgia okay. to Arizona. Cool. That is awesome. That is a heck of a transition too. I mean, I'm, I'm used sure. to surrounded by trees and, and humidity, humidity I'm sure. and- to dry. 
<laughs> Whoa. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that was my main complaint when I, um, when I first met up with Eddie and his wife and just other people when that Jacob, uh, with, I'm sorry, um, Tariana, where are all the trees? Like who took them? Why? There's no Nothing. water. There's no water. Oh, it's it's been water since I've been here. It's been monsooning. It's been raining for yeah. weeks. <laughs> How long you been there? Since August of last year. Oh, you have been there. It's been that much rain. It's been which th- part of Arizona are you in? I'm in Florence. Okay. So it's kind of like the country. Our, our daughter and, and husband and grandkid are in Tucson. I know. They got yeah. spray, green spray paint for grass. Tell them to come up here and get some of this rain. Come get some of these weeds <laughs> and grass. We got plenty of it. <laughs> uh, different area yeah, totally. definitely. <laughs> so you you made the move for your team or job or um i made the move for a better life i was offered opportunities out here more so in Good. georgia Good. i'm going through a divorce trying to do what was best for my children and i um and i wanted to put myself in the best position possible as a single mother to be able to take care of them there you go yeah. Touche, kudos. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been a it's it's been it's been a good move. It's been a good thing. Good. Um, if we can just temp- temper these heat down a little bit, you know, it's hundred and fifteen, hundred and twenty degree weather. You know, Ashley's not used. Ashley's <laughs> not used to all of that. You know, no. but <laughs> no. sorry. <it's> right. no. <laughs> Do you have any more questions, gentlemen? No. What's your favorite no. song to play on your guitar? Have you been practicing? I have been practicing. It's from a it's a fr- an artist called Surdy Beats. And uh oh, what is the name of it? What is the name of the song? Um I can hear the melody in my head and everything because I normally play the bass line to the songs. That's how I kind of okay. learn. I learn from <laughs> the bottom up. Nice. And I want to say it's Kokawa, but I I don't think that that's right. If I'll actually find it and I'll put it across the screen, so when you guys watch, you hear it. You actually awesome. um, see it. Um, but I know it's, his name is Sturdy Beats. He's like a beat maker. Doesn't use any, not too many vocals, but his songs always feature a lot of guitars. And it's something about the sound of an acoustic guitar that just kind of mellows me out. Always has. Yeah. Just a nice you warmth know. to it. The little harm- harmonies going, and yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, what is your walking down the street song? You asked us. <laughs> oh, um, hmm. It's. <laughs> I was gonna say staying alive by the Peaches, but <laughs> when this heat is, it's, ooh, you're trying to. Um, living my life like it's golden by Jill Scott. And if you okay. listen, if you take the time out and read the lyrics to the song, basically kind of encompasses what is happening and the transitions that you go after you having a difficult time, how you appreciate life and how you treasure it like gold. So perfect. That's awesome. Please put that up down there too. I want to be able to listen okay. to it. Definitely. And lastly, for me, mm-hmm. who's your meal you want to eat with anybody in history? I would like to have another. I, w- I would actually say two. One was Michael Jackson. I love Mike. Mm, mm. Despite all of the the turmoil that people yeah. tried to get him involved, what a talent! He was loved, and you could see the love from people. How much they really cared about him all over the world, not just here, everywhere. And I always wanted to emulate that. I always wanted to to be able to affect people in a positive way like that, you know? Um, besides I, you know, I always wanted to marry Michael Jackson since I was five years old. I married a <laughs> Jackson. It wasn't Michael, but it was, right. you know, that close. And my dad, I would love to have another meal with my dad. Cause I lost him. And yeah. um, to be able to have one now and for him to see all of the positive things that I've done, that he was asking me to do, you know, the whole time. Right. Right. Um, so just show him that I listen. Just, just buried mine at yeah. the end of December. We lost him. And, uh, I had a lot of meals with him the last seven years. 
So it was a beautiful thing. I had no regrets when he went. Spent yeah. a lot of nights with my dad. It's a beautiful day, man. And my condolences, Yogi. Uh, thank you. Yeah, he's in a better place. Indeed. So is mine. Yes. So, is mine. so. fun stuff. I don't never. I, I usually don't answer too many questions. When I every time I ask you that, you don't question, always have Yogi on either. <laughs> That's true. I might as well. Just... <laughs> and we have to change that, by the way. Don't take um years to come back, both of you. Okay. 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 But I can't let you go without giving you the last word. So that could be a song, a poem, or just a simple shout out. And Axel, the floor is yours. Sure. All right. Let's see. I don't have a song. I don't have a poem either. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. I, I'll just give a shout out to, the, to my team, the legend. Um, great job this season. Keep it up. Um, everybody rooting for us, all the fans, uh, everyone in the league. Uh, thanks for all the support that everybody's offered us. And uh, we hope we do everybody proud. Indeed. Yogi? How about a joke? Sure. Okay. Guy, guy runs in the bar, runs up to the bar and tells the bartender, pour me 12 beers. So the bartender pours him 12 beers and he just starts slugging them back. And the bartender's like, wow, man, you're drinking those fast. And he goes, well, if you had what I had, you'd be drinking them fast too. And the bartender goes, well, what, what is it that you have? He goes, 75 cents. <laughs> 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 good one. That is good. <laughs> we ran out of there because the cops were coming. To <laughs> good one, Yogi. I think you're the only person that's ever told me a joke. That was all right. Good. Here we go. I got plenty. Well, we'll have a joke a week from Yogi. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys. Thank you so much. You all have a beautiful Our pleasure. Thank you. Nice being here with the axe. You too. What is up, SFL Nation? And we are back with my fourth and goal interview featuring a good friend and an old coach of mine, Mr. Deion Hawkins. He is uh, uh owner, excuse me. He is um uh, was my former owner, but he is the current owner of Tulsa Desperados, as well as coach. You have all the coaching over there, don't you? A Not little no bit more. You don't nah, do it at all? Oh, I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, so he just sitting back, you know, letting everybody make the money for him, being all cool, calm, and collected as usual. How you doing, Dion? I'm good. I'm great. Living hey. the dream. Indeed. Indeed, man. So, got a few questions for you because it has been a while since you've been on. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know why y'all take forever to come back. You know, like... You gotta ask. Why do you mean I gotta <laughs> ask, man? You, better you gotta bring ask. Your, you better bring yourself I don't be happy. To say don't nobody care what i got to say yeah i do <laughs> <laughs> you and you know i don't know if people a lot of people that are new may not know this but tosa dion gave me my start as a quarterback if dion didn't pick me up more than likely i was gonna go as probably a tight end or a defensive end in atlanta you know but dion paved the way to the player that i am now um and I wanted to thank you for that because if you never put it in my head that I could be something more, actually be a leader for a team, because that's something I never thought that I would yeah. ever do. I probably wouldn't have done it. So thank you for that. Of course, you're welcome. You deserve that. I seen you put in the work and you can be a leader of all people. So, of course. Appreciate it, man. So tell me, what's been going on with you? What's up? Real, new life, you know, real life? Mr. Mr. Merritt now and babies right. now. How's that? It's crazy. <laughs> I still can't believe in my damn self. <laughs> yeah. Well, now it's good though. Everybody good. Family good. good. Man, got a bigger house now. Seems like every time I hop, every time I hop on your podcast, we be on the move somewhere. So next time it'll probably be two years from now, and we'll be somewhere else that <laughs> time. So, uh, but now everything good. Family life. That's all. It's good. I mean, family healthy. That's all I can ask for. So, yeah, we good over here, over this way. Good. You still doing your football thing? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Um, but we had a national championship game uh, last month. I actually didn't even go. So, 
um i don't know um we we just started like training for the next season like the practice was this saturday and i didn't even go so i don't know i ain't really decided yet i might i might be done mm. yeah it's, it's a lot of ch- changes going on so i don't need yeah, my body breaking down i might not yeah <laughs> that's what i was gonna say bro you yeah. can't, can't take them hits like you used to right so <laughs> yeah, it's kind of up in there i'm probably 50 50 right now so we shall see yeah, you pretty good though. I remember you used to put the links in the locker room for us yeah. to watch you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I do my thing. If I can't get out there and be one of the best, then yeah, it's just by the time, let me know. It's time to hang them up. Hey, so being in the SFL, does that actually kind of help satiate a hunger? If for the you know, since you actually yeah, play? It does. Uh just competition. I mean, you play football or uh, any sports in general. I mean, I don't play for fun. It's only fun when I win. So uh <laughs> I mean, I used to enjoy the experience, but I mean, being so competitive, the losses, they they weigh on you. Like, it's just past week. Like, I'm not coaching anything. I'm just watching pretty much as a fan. I mean, I know what's going on as far as like behind the scenes with the team and playbooks and stuff, but I'm interested to see what happens just like everyone else as far as not it being as hands on. So, uh, but just the competitive nature and the drive with the SFL, it, it definitely helps because it's more of a mental challenge than just physical besides go out and juking somebody or catching a pass, but you can be the best physically, but that don't mean you get here in the SFL. If you don't got your mental right and put in the time and the effort of making a good playbook and game plan, then shit, you're going to get smashed every week. <laughs> so yeah. It, yeah. it definitely does. When you were coaching, when you were heavily involved with the playbooks and things like that, mm. how many hours would you say you spent doing that? Um, initially when I first started, like mm-hmm. 10 plus hours, that's all I was doing. It was like my life because I wanted it so bad. Like mm-hmm. I'm being a new owner. You want to prove yourself. So, and some of these guys, like, you know, they've been playing the game forever. I didn't, I never played all pro when I was a kid. Like it was mad and I didn't know nothing about all pro. So I had to acclimate myself. So I was, um, heavy into the playbook so i were on i don't know how many sims xboxes i never i didn't have the um damn i can't even think of the name I'm having a brain fart but uh like the computer and stuff so i was just doing everything off the actual console so the emulator. i make yeah yeah emulator that's it i had my console i had consoles so i never maybe 10 plus hours like just simming doing playbooks running teams versus each other so um later on maybe about three to four and then one season i didn't even run no sims at all i was just doing the play because after a while i mean it's the same plays you know what's gonna work or so you kind of don't even really have to see it and we actually made the playoffs that year so i was like maybe i need to just stop simming and just kind of <laughs> ride with what i think so um yeah to start off unreal all my time but again i was single back then so and had no kids and stuff so i had a lot more free time back then to do that now i wouldn't even know I wouldn't get, be able to get nowhere close to that right now if I had to. I bet. I bet. So, Tilsa's two and two at the moment. Who has been some of your most formidable? Well, who do you think is your Sue most? Sue Falls. Okay. You got to finish. Okay. Sue Falls. I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> nah, I don't. I, don't, I got all respect in the world for Sue Falls and their management, but. They've had our number since I've came into the league. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, just this past week, we lost to Sioux Falls. We dominated the entire game. My staff had a perfect playbook, winning the whole game. You think we should be about 20 or 30 points. Like, the, if you just watch the game and the game flow, like, okay, this is our game. But somehow we tricked it off at the end. We threw two interceptions at the end. JQ looked like. Um, the best quarterback in the world the whole game. I think he had only a few completions. And then we got all marched all the way down to the red zone twice and threw picks in the red zone. And then they came back and scored and won the game. So it's always Sioux Falls. Even the year the Sioux Falls was trash, they only won like two games. We was the game that they won. So all respect in the world for Sioux Falls, but no matter what we do, they have our number for some reason. I, I can't explain it. So yeah, definitely Sioux Falls. I, I hate playing against them because no matter what happens, they just have our number. I think if we play 12 or 13 times, I think I may have beat them twice. Like through my entire SFL career, like with the Desperados, it's, yeah, it's crazy. I want to say when I was with you guys, 
I know one time, yeah, we definitely lost because AJ Levy <laughs> put a meme in my get in my DMs. Yeah. And it was hilarious, but I was pissed at the same time. <laughs> and I think one year we won. Yeah. You yeah, know? it'll be a few times, but yeah, um, like I got you. They just 80, 90 percent of the time. They just <laughs> I don't know what it is. They got our number. Do you guys you don't you guys don't play twice, right? Mm. Shit, I don't even know to be honest. Well, I was I gonna think, ask. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> I don't know. I had to look at the schedule. No, we play indie twice. Okay. Yeah. Because I was wondering who who was the team that you look forward to playing? Because you just know it's gonna be a really good matchup. Mm. Either way. Whoever we got next. So like since Oklahoma City left, we don't really have like an in-state rival or a true rival. Mm. I mean, she's Arizona, but we only play y'all every three years. So, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, we don't even got no rally. So, I hate everyone equally. So, I'm just <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> um, so, for people that do not know, who, why did you choose Greenwood District Stadium to be Tulsa Stadium? Because we've had a lot of people that have joined since, yeah. you know, the league. So, well, just because of the history of the area. So if people don't know about the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre, they called it a ride, but then they changed the name because it was a massacre of um, like the influential free black community that has like airport and libraries and businesses. So and this is in 1921. So it was nicknamed Black Wall Street. And so it was like a whole thing of some lady in the I don't know, a whole bunch of mess. So um people were jealous of the area and they came through and like burned pretty much all of it to the ground and people who had generational wealth and lifted themselves up from their bootstraps and had businesses and homes and um yeah so i chose that just to kind of homage to that those people and uh kind of bring awareness to that area that um, you can only imagine it if that would have never happened what would our community be like today? It probably would be like like a Harlem or something like that. We're big. I mean, I ain't never been to Harlem, but <laughs> you always hear like on the Renaissance and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Business. Just think of 1921. If you had like an airplane back then, being a person of color, like that's like a crazy achievement. And they had all their own businesses and things. So yeah, that was the main um, reason why I chose that that name and even to to put it in Tulsa to begin with, and because that's where I'm from, but just because of some of the history behind the the city itself. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, was Tulsa your first choice, or did you have another destination yeah. in mind? No, I was. It was definitely Tulsa. Tulsa was number one. I would have, excuse me, I would only mm-hmm. put it somewhere else. Um, if for whatever reason I couldn't get Tulsa, but yeah, Tulsa is where I'm from. I've lived numerous other places, but you know, Tulsa was always going to be my number one. Do you think that Tulsa is underrated. I think so, um, to a certain extent, and I don't. I'm not sure why, because I mean, we had a few years where we've been down, but um, I mean, we never went like 12 and one. It just blew through the league. But I mean, we've made multiple playoff appearances. One finally won playoff game. So, um, but I get it though. I mean, if you don't respect, you got to earn it. You got to be consistent. You can't just go to the playoffs a couple of years and then think everybody's just gonna give you kudos. You know. It don't work like that. So with the Arizonas and the Baltimores, you got to put in that work and be consistently top three, four, five teams in the league to to get that respect. So um, I think we are, but I, I think that's that's the reason why, just consistency. And when- that, was, I, that, that was leading me to my next question about like Portland. And I wanted to know, like, why do you think t- – like you and teams like Portland that do have significant strides that do have players that, you know, are making significant strides and breaking records and things like Mm -hmm. that. Why do you guys think that you, that they go unrecognized at times? Mm, That's a good question. To be honest, I'm, I'm (laughs) frankly, I'm not even sure. It seems like when I first got the team, it's, um, yeah, a lot of people that was outside it, they don't even understand kind of our culture or uh to be honest and i've seen in the chat like just simply hate on us for no reason whether it's our jerseys or um maybe it's me i mean i'm kind of a brash personality 
I'll tell it like it is. If you don't like it, I don't give a f- like fuck you. Like <laughs> so, um, maybe that's the reason. But yeah, I, as far as just putting my finger on what specific answer or reason why, then I I really have no idea. But if someone has any stigma or misconceptions about Tulsa, even myself, I mean, I'm an open book. Hit me up, ask questions if they want to. So, um, yes. That's a good question. I never really thought about why, but who knows, man? We'll find out one day. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. Um, why did you choose Jalen, Berto, and Gabriel to help you um and the coaching aspect? And what made them so special for you? Because I know, I know you, Dion, and I know that you like to have the control, make sure, hey, this stuff gonna work right, this stuff right. gonna work the way it's supposed to. So what made right. them so special? Uh well they they put in the work they deserved it I mean it was times where I had things going on in my life personal life and I couldn't I was away or I couldn't didn't have time to work on the playbook so mm-hmm. those weeks I was gone and they put in the work stepped up made sure stuff was submitted on time um and just their drive I mean they love the SFL it's a part of their life just like it is mine um and they deserve their opportunity so um I'm actually enjoying being hands off and. I know, and you know, the SFL and having a team being on yourself, like that's your baby. That's your creation or your part of ownership. And it's tough to to let it go and let the reins have someone else have the reins. But um, I mean, they've all been, with the exception of Gabe, they've been Tulsa through and through. Um, and now Marco, he's came on with us. So yeah. draft, drafted Berto, drafted Jaden and I didn't know them fools from Adam when I first Mm -hmm. met them, but I mean, just talking to to them, knowing their passion and what they uh, would like to do as far as their SFL career and goals. It was just, it was just time. They deserve it. They put in the work. Just believe it wasn't just given. They earned it. And I have full trust in those guys to, to do the best that they can. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do you block out the naysayers and the negative when you do hear that, like when you do see people just hating on you for no reason, how do you block that out and just be like, you know what? Forget y'all. I know what we got. I know what we're going to do. Yeah. I don't ever really let that get to me. But um, if I see stuff, I do say little snipey comments. Shit, I might be like, oh, F y'all or something. It's all in good <laughs> love and fun and stuff. Like I don't have nothing really against a lot of people in the SFL, but yeah. I'll talk shit be like, fuck you, but I don't really <laughs> mean F you in that way. I just, it's all in love and fun, but um, yeah, I don't really let that affect me. I just, if it's something that's too, not too personal, I'll just ignore it and let it ride because it's like ESPN or Fox, they do all these little banter and somebody got to be the bad guy, so yeah. I don't mind if it's us. Okay. Okay. What is the most important aspect of being an owner for you? Uh, just relationships. I mean, at the end of the day, we all want to win. It's a game, a uh, competitive game, but I want everyone to en- enjoy the SFL experience. So um, even if it's not with my team, everyone has different aspirations. Like when I first joined, I wanted to be an owner. I only made a player because I wanted to own a team one day. So I worked my way up. So um, like I love that I'm able to give opportunity to the next person and help. Like we got Philly Collins. He's one of our coordinators now. So I know he wanted to get into coaching. So he had a couple of seasons building him up, working with him, and uh, he was making playbooks on his own. So now I'm able to give him that opportunity to fulfill one of his dreams of being a, a coach. So uh, that's why I do it, helping people out. And it's not just for yourself. It's giving other people the opportunity. And whether a player is someone like Douglas Brown, he might not have been a running back in real life, but now he gets to live out his dream of being a star running back. So just seeing satisfaction from other people and uh, helping them achieve their goals and ultimately enjoying the SFL experience as a whole. I and mean, it, it gives me satisfaction. So that's the number one thing. All right. Good deal. Will your wife and your son, well, first of all, do your wife or your son have a player and would you, would they ever join the league? Yeah. I've talked to my wife uh, about joining the league. So she said she was last season, but she never got around to it. But um, <laughs> they actually they have generic players on our team. So okay. my wife is our um, backup QB. She has been the last few years. Um, I had to go change her last name because it was young before Nas Hawkins. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and then my son, he is our backup tight end. So he's out there as a number two. Because now we only have one tight end this season. So 
He's a, I made him one of our backups, just the name and shit. Okay. Yep. He loved watching the games too. Every time it's as fair, he like football. He be running back and forth. <laughs> Touchdown. So we got like Uh-oh. a thing every time we score a touchdown, we all high five and stuff. So yes, it's a good time. So you already know what that means, right? Yeah. Oh, he gonna ball. That boy, he got an arm. He probably gonna be a quarterback. Yeah, he he ready to go. He be backpedaling and stuff. So <laughs> he always go to my games, my practices, and be out there throwing football. So yeah, he he ready. When Mighty Mike time come, yeah, he gonna be a problem. Okay. I love yeah. that. I love that, man. Um if if you were an well, you are an athlete. So if you guys could have a walkout song, I'm not sure if y'all do, but if you could have a walkout song, what would it be? Um, man, I'll make some... hmm. It'll be some Devin the Dude. Probably Devin, Devin the Dude. <laughs> what's the name of the song blowing trees i can't remember the name of the song i think that's what it was because you actually i had that on the show one time because yeah. you wanted to hear it that's yeah. one of my favorite songs i can't think of the name i think it is blowing trees it might be <laughs> smoke that's what it is <laughs> no i'm just saying like if you don't know what i mean smoke <laughs> I would think nowadays people would. I mean, it's yeah. legal almost everywhere. Yeah. Um, it is Oklahoma. You got a medical card. See, Arizona, you don't need one. Uh. Mm-hmm. What do you? <laughs> what do you guys? Um, is is there a particular team? Did I ask you this? Is there a particular team that you're looking forward to playing down for the, the throughout the uh, the rest of your? Mm-hmm. I think so. I don't know. Schedule? I asked it with Sioux Falls. Oh no! You no, said who do I? That's one of your most formidable opponents. One of the who just... I'm looking forward to. Yeah, that's that's left on your schedule. Probably L.A. I don't think I've ever played them before. Like we actually played them this upcoming week. I don't think we've ever faced them ever in their existence. So wow! Just because it's a new opponent, I don't know yeah. nothing about them. So yeah, that's kind of exciting. Okay. Everybody else we played before. If aliens landed on Earth, and who would you recommend them to talk to? First person you say, you know what? Hey, go talk to them. Who would it be? Mm, probably Kanye. Kanye? Got, the, got the conversation with him. They probably <laughs> pack up and go to f- back wherever they came from. <laughs> so shit. <laughs> They'll get you like, yeah, right. let's 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 get away from her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crazy nuts, man. All right, so. What would the title of your autobiography be? Mm. Probably Dion of memoir of how to not give a f- <laughs> 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 I don't let anything really get to me. So like I that was kind of the only thing. Like I always say I was gonna get a tattoo to say it though because i mean even when life throws curveballs at you i mean don't let nothing get you down i don't definitely have my fair share of whether it's getting in trouble or work situations or stuff that just gets you down throughout your day so just know that you can always overcome anything and i don't mean it though, like not caring i mean like whatever life throws at you Handle whatever it. yeah get over it whatever you gotta do moping about it I know depression is a real thing and it hurts, but it's all temporary. And um, if you're willing to fight for what you want and you can always achieve your dreams, whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. If you. See, that was kind of deep, huh? That's that was. Like weed, so I can pull that out. Every <laughs> and see, I thought about some of these questions. I figured you would, you know. Yeah, you making like me that. think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's something else that'll make you think. What do you think? What is something that you think is totally overrated? Like, just why? Mm. Why are people into this? And it could be anything. Politics. Mm. People get so worked up. Like, the whole, whatever it was called, they stormed the Capitol. I'm like, bro. Yeah. Like, I mean, left or right, I don't give a damn. I mean, my life is the same. Whoever in the White House or government, people act like whether this person or this person is the president or senator. 
you still work that job. Ain't nothing really changed in your life. So why risk your life or your family or put yourself in a prison? There's people in prison right now over who the fuck was the president was. Like, who really cares? Like, it's not that big mm-hmm. a deal. Most of them don't give a fuck about us. So why would you put your family in a precarious situation based off a person who probably don't even give a shit about you, just lying to you to get your vote? So right. I never really understood it. I mean, most politicians, probably all of them are fucking liars. They just tell you what you want to hear to get your vote. So live your life based off your ideals and instead of just, oh, we on this side, so I'm going to vote for that person. Listen to what they're saying, because at the end of the day, it's all bullshit and we know it, but people still feed, feed into it. So. I don't give a who the president is. Okay. What is something that you were very fearful of when you were younger that you find out that was just silly nowadays? Um, like actual fear? Yeah, just something that you just like, hey, I'm scared. I don't don't do that. I'm scared. Or I don't like that. But then you realize, oh, what the, what was I scared of? Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it was fear, but like, you know, a high school, like, you don't want to, you didn't really want to be an outcast. Like, you want to, and I was, I don't know if it was like the cool crowd or whatever, but you want to be accepted by a group of your peers. So yeah. you might have done some things that you probably wouldn't normally do just to to fit in or do some stupid shit. Like, I, I broke into a school one time. I probably wouldn't have did that just because my friends was doing this. I'm like, all right, I'll do it too. Mm-hmm. Police came. It was some whole extra stuff, but just stuff like that. that I'm like, why would I do some shit like that? Like that ain't even who I am. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So just when you get older, you realize those things. And I mean, at least it wasn't, I didn't do something that got me in crazy trouble or I was in prison or nothing, but right. just the realization of, I mean, being a young kid, you doing kids do stupid shit. So um, just the fear of following the crowd or the group and trying to fit in as previously I cared about that. And now I wouldn't even think twice about <laughs> doing my own thing, not caring what anybody else thought of me. Okay. Well. Yeah. So you're walking down the street and there's a song playing in the background that's your theme song. What is it? Getting blow. That's what it was. That's that the name of that blow. song. <laughs> it just came to me. By Devin the Dude. Okay. No. All right. What has been the best day of your life so far? Uh, when my son was born and getting married, I mean, that was a crazy experience. I never thought that would happen. It was surreal. It was like a, my wife was walking in the aisle. It was like a, like an out of body experience. Like I didn't even, I ain't cried nothing. I ain't no Mark, but you know what I'm <laughs> I damn near did though. Like I was just, I don't know. It was, I was like, I was physically there, but mentally I was in a whole nother place. I'm like, like, is this really happening right now? Like, is this my life? Like, I was happy. It was a good out of body experience, but I was just like I was in shock that it was this was my wedding, all of this stuff, and all these people here for me and stuff. So that was, and then I was just happy it was over because getting married is a whole nightmare. <laughs> Money that, and that planning, it, yeah, <laughs> stuff that I don't give two fucks about. <laughs> is that going wrong? People worry about the food and the cake. I don't care about none of that stuff. So yeah. But yeah, that and my son and children. Love it. Mm-hmm. I would say if I was going to get married again, I would definitely do it like on a beach or something. Or yeah. something. It's just something kind of intimate. You know, yeah. you don't have to go and have a big church and spin out. No. It's right, right. It's y'all at the end of the day. But I'm happy for you, man. I'm really Appreciate happy. It. Appreciate it. She's very beautiful. Met her during the convention. You know. Thank you. Um, really happy that you're happy, man. Last right. question for you is if you can have dinner with anybody that's um, alive or not, that is um, famous or not, who would it be and why? Mm-hmm. Well, that would be my grandfather. He passed when I was younger. So um, what you would do to have another chance or another moment with someone that was influential and that you really loved in your life and he was influential in mine and kind of helped me be the man i am today and put me on the right path so yeah if i had a chance i'd i trade a lot just to have dinner with him again that'd be pretty neat love it man love it well yeah. this is a great conversation do you got any questions for me before i let you go 
Nah. Okay. No. Well. So. Mm, probably not. But so yeah, when you ahead. left, when you when you left Tulsa, did you maybe not the decision itself, but did you regret how that all went about uh, that whole situation? Yes. Okay. I think that everything could have been done a whole lot differently. Yeah. Um, I think that I should have said something to you sooner. Mm. Um. And even though I I did want to definitely play for, you know, help Eddie out and things like that, I just think that the way that I left um, could have been different. And I think that the way Kanye left, I think we both could have did things differently. Now, yep. I don't know how he feels about that, but, um, <laughs> you know. Hindsight um, is twenty twenty. It is. It is. And I'm still grateful for the opportunity that both of you guys, both you and Eddie, gave me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, my, my main thing is I did not want to ruin the friendship and the relationship that you and I had right. um, behind all that. Because I knew you were pissed. I knew. And even when I finally made the decision, and I, it, it took a lot for me to tell you, Dion. Like, yeah. I was literally crying when I was telling you because I knew <laughs> I knew how much I meant to you as a player and what I was doing and even how I even came into the league and you were the first one that offered me a yeah. real position, you know. And then the uncertainty of really like, did I make that choice? Did I did I make the right decision? Mm-hmm. You know, and how you would view me after, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I get that. Now, in, in hindsight, I'm I'm actually glad you did. I mean, you're doing great things. Like podcast blew the hell up. You know, one of the biggest platforms in the league. Like from where you started, that first interview we did, you can barely hear half of it. <laughs> that crappy background <laughs> that we had, it was breaking up and cracking. You still got that? I need to go back and listen to that. I still do. For real, you need to send that to me so I can listen to that joke because that was funny. <laughs> We didn't know what the hell we was doing. I mean, you asking, like, should I do this? I'm like, yeah, fucking, let's do it. Let's see what happened. And now look at you. You in HD, 4K and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was good. It's, it's a good experience. So, yeah. I will always say, you know, that Tulsa, you're always going to be in my heart. You know, Corey, freaking Nate, um, when you had um oh my god espen you oh, know yeah. oh man yeah. that was some good times and yeah, sure. i remember even the times that we did lost we just always had fun and i still got a t-shirt that he gave me that yeah. y'all <laughs> so That's you know sick. it's um it's good though it's good that you know you move on and you've moved on and you've yeah. you know acquired a whole group of people that's you know down for you J- jq was a bomb quarterback yeah. you know um so yeah. you're doing good you're we like i always say that we like the dallas mavericks and sfl because we got people that done came to toss and now they doing great things and i literally don't have room for them like jason friends people yeah. y'all had Mel- y'all had mellow it's people that came here and now they own doing their own thing. So glad to see it. I can be a starting. We can be a starting point for people getting their opportunities. You cultivating greatness. Mm. That should be your motto. Well, looking right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Um, I'm, I know it's late. I'm gonna let you go, but I cannot let you go without giving you the last word, Dion. So that can be a song, that can be a poem, or that can be just a simple shout out, man. Right now, the floor is yours. About no song. Fair yeah. <laughs> Eastside. No, I'm just playing. No, <laughs> I can't see you look. What the deal? <laughs> I always say the same thing every time you do that. Shout out to the league, SFL. So I think I'll give you a note and a half this time. So that's all you get. <laughs> I appreciate it. I wish you would have wasted. I started drinking it. <laughs> you can carry it to where you want to, man. Maybe yeah, the next yeah. time. We go to convention together. We can do some karaoke. They can show me oh, what yeah. you really got to sing some Usher yeah. or something. 
<laughs> that ain't gonna be nothing nice. People gonna be running out the room. <laughs> oh man, good stuff, brother. Good luck to you guys for the rest. Appreciate of the it. Me too. Make it to the playoffs. Make it beyond. I'm hoping that we see you guys sometime soon. Yep. Okay. Same, Nito. All right, brother. See you. All right. All right. Later. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I hope that you enjoyed the fourth and go interviews and enjoyed the show. A uh, special shout out goes out to Tom Welsh, Jacob Bovet, Dion Hawkins, Axel Raven, and Yogi Bar, and especially Diggy. Thank you so much. Hey, you have any words of wisdom or encouragement for the people tonight? Words of encouragement? Mm-hmm. Uh, I know people have their own lives. I know people have busy schedules, family, work, all that good stuff. But if, if your existence in the league is just watching your own games, you're missing out on a lot of good stuff. You're missing out on this show. You're missing out on the streets are talking. You're missing out on at Dave Axis show. You're missing out on Eddie Gage show. You know, say it with your chest. You're missing out on just even if it's just games games in general there are so many exciting games that happen each week and you know i fell into that before you know i watched the minor stuff but when i started you know getting on with minor fights and insights or you know paying attention to some of the more pro teams everybody starts out watching their own game but you're Mm -hmm. missing out on so much exciting stuff even if it's just pick two other teams you kind of kind of like hey man they're fun to watch let me watch it you're missing you're missing out so try to take that opportunity even if it's just one extra game something I agree. else something else. we got something for everybody here you know you're paying your money you're paying good money for your subscription enjoy it take your time yeah you, you know, know what it's like like ashley it's like if i went to subway or one of these other places i mean you're, you're paying for the sub you might as well load the hell out of that thing. That's Let what I'm saying. Finish all this. I mean, you everything. Load, I don't want that thing to shut. <laughs> if I'm gonna pay that, I don't want that slice of slice of meat with some, you know, sauce on there and close it. No, if that <laughs> thing can't hardly shut, I didn't get my money's worth. That's oh, right. Don't put ice in my drink either. I don't put ice in my drink either because I want mine filled to the brim. I'm gonna get my bucks worth. So there That's you go. Right, you tell him. You tell him. <laughs> But listen, we cannot wait to bring you another show next week. But until then, y'all, stay safe, treat each other well. Diggy and Stryker, we're out. <laughs> that was good.